first of all, uh, happy World Whiskey Day to you all. Uh, that's that's what we celebrate today. For me, it's every day a whiskey day. <laughs> it's just another big occasion to drink more. <laughs> um, my, my name is Shilton Almeida. I work for Paul John Whiskies for the European market. I'm based over here in London. Uh, born and brought up in Goa. So I am uh, uh, from, from Goa, just very close from the distillery. I would say about 20 minutes from the distillery. That's where I live. A little bit about me, about my journey with the industry. Um, I, I started in 2006 uh, when I first uh, moved to Qatar in the Middle East and was working for Qatar Airways in the duty-free store selling whiskeys. Five years uh, doing that job, and I will always recommend someone saying, there is, there is not a place you want to work if you love whiskey, because all you're doing over there is only selling and you're not drinking any of it. <laughs> The closest you could get is if there is a damage and you can only smell it. <laughs> Otherwise, no. So that's fi that five years got me into the curiosity of how whiskey is made and learning something by yourself and, and understanding the liquid. Um, you're reading a lot or, you know, just going through stuff uh, and just trying to learn as much as you can. 2012 uh, is uh, when I joined Paul John in Goa, uh, my home place started working with the distillery in the Goan market uh, locally. And uh, that's uh, when I first seen how whiskey is made after reading all, all of it. Um, and 2015, I moved to the UK, looking after the UK market first. And today I look after the European markets. That's pretty much me uh, in, 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 in short, um, my journey into the industry. Uh, when, uh, always on the move, uh, doing festivals across Europe now and tasting sessions, uh, except for the last one year, which is not me, I used to live in a suitcase before that. <laughs> and uh, being in, in one house uh, for the one year is, is not something which I was used to. <laughs> but here we are, thanks to the technology. How many of you guys have tried Paul John before? Can I see someone who has tried Paul John? Nice. Uh, for those guys who have not tried Paul John, have you tried uh, other Indian whiskey? Amrut, maybe. No? Is this, uh, how many of you guys are trying the Indian whiskey for the first time? Oh, nice. To start with, the Indian whiskey does not taste like our curry. It's not spicy, okay? <laughs> I come across this many times. Many people say, oh, Indian whiskey. When you're doing a festival, I said, does it taste like your food? Is it spicy? No. <laughs> um, the whiskey making uh, goes uh, in India. I mean, first thing people say, does India make whiskey? I never knew about it. So the whiskey making in India goes way back in the 18th century during the British Raj when the first distillery was set up up north of India in a place called as Kasoli. Um, Solon number one was the whiskey which was out then, which are, they are coming back again now. Uh, that's when the, uh, it was based uh, in Solon, the place, because of because that area, the foothills of Himalayas, was the British summer camp. Uh, and that's how they ended up over there, which was a brewery, started off with a brewery and then to a distillery. Uh, the first ones after that, I mean, uh, post-independence, uh, the production of whiskey making was hampered after independence. That's uh, the main reason saying, well, you don't have enough barley for people to eat. It's a big country. Why do you want to make alcohol? But in the meantime, by that time, people have already started drinking and they have, st uh, uh, they have been on whiskey as a poison, you know, and what do you want to drink? And how do you stop it? You can't just stop it. And people today have, um, if you look at it, India is the biggest market for whiskey. But most of the whiskeys made in India are made out of molasses spirit. They are molasses based spirit in India. This is how it started because when you stop it of uh, using barley, what do you look out for? Molasses came in handy, and you st uh, still find uh, those whiskies in India. Fifty percent of the global production of whiskey has been consumed in India today. That's how big that market is. Um, but most of it goes into blends. We'll cover up a lot more uh, of whatever I know about the Indian whiskey market. I'll throw in. I'm sure there are a lot of other points on the, it, it's a big topic. You can go on with it. I'm sure Ravi and Yesh and the guys have got a lot of to throw in as well about the Indian market. Uh, but Amrut came in 2004 as the first distillery coming out, uh, releasing. Um, they set up the road for us as well, I would say, uh, and opened up a lot of people, a lot of eyes in the market saying India can also make good whiskey. 
2007, uh, 2008 is when the, the distillery was set up for us. Uh, and 2009, uh, we started distilling. 2012, the whiskey was first launched in the UK. But today we are in 38 countries across, uh, across the world. So we're just growing. Hi, Nick. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's how we, uh, we got into the market. The brand, it's named as Paul John, uh, which is named after the chairman of the company who started uh, a company in 1996 in India, making whiskey and rum for the Indian market, not the single malls. Um, he loved his single malls and that's when on his travels, he came across single malls and he said, uh, why don't I start my own uh, whiskey? Just out of passion, pure passion, the distillery is based in Goa, uh, 10 kilometers from the sea, um, hot and humid climate, very tropical climates. Uh, and uh, we do, uh, the Paul John whiskeys are all 100% Indian whiskeys. Why do I say 100%? We'll cover up that as well later on. Um, before I just go on, uh, I, I always like to talk to people with a dram in my hand. So let's start with whiskey number one, which is the Brilliance. They are lovely tasting mats as well. Yes, well done with the, with the tasting mats. <laughs> Um, the Thank, first you, whiskey, Thank you very much. The first whiskey over here is called as the Brilliance. Not sure if you have seen the pictures, but I'm just going to pick one from there. Um, Brilliance is at 46% ABV. Uh, can't say much here because it's an empty bottle, <laughs> almost. Um, Brilliance has been the, uh, an entry uh, for us for a long time till we have a new one now, which is called as the Nirvana, which is an entry level at 40% uh, whiskey. All the whiskeys you're gonna try today are non-chill filtered and natural colors. Brilliance over here is at, as I said, it's 46% non-chill filtered. It's, uh, it's a young whiskey, uh, throw in whatever you want to, uh, you know, what you, what you feel like on the age, uh, what you think about the age, uh, just drop in your comments, any guesses, you know, just go for it. Um, it's uh, matured in American oak cask, ex bourbon cask, first fills and second fills. So you got a lot of vanilla and honey. Uh, I didn't mention the ABVs on the on the labels because Shilton requested not to share ABVs. He's going to ask every, all of us to guess. I'll I'll skip on this one. Let's let's yeah. Well, I, I mentioned this. So going forward, let's let's start guessing. Forty six percent. This one's 46. Oh, I said it. <laughs> at, at least I got one. <laughs> yeah, so you get, you get a lot of vanilla and honey over here. Um, <laughs> um, uh, guesses on the age, I can see someone saying three, someone saying four and five. Um, we, we, the, I mean, until recently, there there were not no such rules in India to to follow like how we have over here to follow, to mature it in American oak cask. But um, for us uh, and for Amrut and for Rampur, the single malls that you, uh, the Indian single malls that you find uh, in Europe, uh, they do follow. Otherwise, it's not called, you cannot call it as whiskey. Uh, this one is uh, matured in uh, it's a five and six years old whiskey. Uh, it, we initially, the, the first ones you will see back in 2000, uh, 2012 and 13, when we launched, you might find a three and four years old as well. These are five and six years old whiskeys now. So it's, it's, you can see the freshness. It's a young whiskey, but it has got a lot coming in from the, if you look at the color itself, you know, this is a lot of color for a five and six years old. It has a, got a lot of extraction done from the wood. The reason behind that is uh, with the temperatures, with the heat. The extraction rate from the cask for us is a lot higher, a lot faster than Scotland uh, because of the heat. Um, the average temperature in the warehouse is 23 and 25 degrees Celsius, uh, which is, uh, that's why I said it average. It can even shoot up now in this time of the year. It can even go up to 40 and 45. Uh, I'll just ask you a quick question there, Shilton. Yeah. Um, in Indian whiskey, is it the same as um, American whiskey, where the ABV actually increases because of the heat? It's, yes, but for us in India as a whole country, we get different temperatures, uh, different climates everywhere. Uh, for us, we are uh, there's a lot of humidity in the air. 
So uh, the, the AVB drops for us. Uh, there is water in the air, so there's no much water going out. So it's a, uh, for Amrut, it, uh, I think it goes higher uh, because they are based in Bangalore. Uh, and it's for us, we are close to the sea. It's just the, the different climate gives us a different uh, 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 style and a different situation for the, for the wearers. That the humidity, which is a 60% and 70% humid on average, can shoot up to 95 this time of the year in the month of May. So it's that humid. So there's lots of water in the air. Uh, it's also very close to the sea, a lot of saltiness uh, in, the, in the air as well, tropical climates. Um, it's been raining heavily at the moment uh, back home, uh, but uh, these things do, do change a lot for us. We are 100% Indian, the Bali as well. Uh, we use uh, Indian six row Bali, uh, which is uh, a different style of Bali compared to a two row Bali, which is used in, in, this, uh, in, in most of the Scotch whiskies. The six row Bali, uh, we will have, when I say six row, if it is a new term for you, it will have six grains in a row instead of two. Uh, it's very husky. It's more huskier. At the same time, it's very high on protein and low on carbohydrates, just the opposite of a two row Bali. Uh, in short, it's a very healthy drink. Okay, let's... <laughs> so unfortunately, you guys, you just get the, uh, the double-edged sword, don't you? You get the a huge angel share and you get a decrease in the ABV and just just going forward anybody uh we generally keep everybody muted but if anybody wants to jump in and ask a question yeah. just unmute yourself and ask a question um whenever you like yeah please uh, and anything you want to ask just just uh, drop in or maybe uh, uh, type in a comment if you don't want to um yes the angel share the angel share, uh, which is the loss of uh, per year uh, evaporation, we have about eight to 10% a year, which is a lot compared to Scotland. Uh, but I think uh, the guys in Bangalore has even more than, than Goa. They are around 12% uh, per year. That's because of the humidity for us, which helps a bit uh, to not let much alcohol go out. Whereas in Bangalore, it will be more, uh, it's, it's either dry heat and, and it gets very cold at night. So it's a very different uh, climate and both the places. Um, six row Bali uh, and uh, faster and faster extraction rate are the main differences. The rest is the same. Copper pot stills, double distillation, nothing else changes, but this different style will give you a, uh, a different uh, whiskey. So uh, brilliance again, as I said, um, unpeated, uh, very, a lot fresher. You get a lot of vanilla, honey, some light notes of tropical fruit as well. Uh, on the palate, you will find uh, it again being sweet. For a second, I thought Ashok is sitting as well in here. I was gonna say hi to Ashok. <laughs> Why yep. is that? <laughs> Who in here looks like Ashok? <laughs> Nico, Nick has got a background there, <laughs> Nicola. Not me. Ah, okay. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> With the fusion, I thought I thought maybe maybe you're talking about rocks because he's he's from around the same place. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he's got his camera off. <laughs> no, it's, I I just saw it over there. I was like, hey, I was gonna say, hey, Ashok. <laughs> what what are, what are you doing at Nicola's house? <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you if you look at this brilliance itself again at forty six percent, it it gets a, a a lot of oiliness coming in. It has got that stickiness coming out from the whiskey. The flavors linger a long time in your mouth. It has got a long finish. Um, it's it's one of the reason. A main reason will be the six row barley. Uh, you get this nutty character as well, uh, a bit, uh, which is our our DNA, I would say, uh, uh, of the distillery. You will find that common uh, in a lot. You find the tropical fruits, you'll find that coming out from most of the whiskeys as well, fruity notes. But uh, yeah, it's a, I, I think it's a, it's a great uh, dram to start off. Can I just ask you a quick question on your barley? You say you use this six raw barley. Is, it, is that because of yield? Is it a bigger yield or is it for, because of the flavor? Because of the flavor mainly for us. We also get the Turo Bali. You also go the Turo Bali in, in, in uh, India, but uh, we grow more of the Six Row Bali. And Michael, our master distiller, uh, preferred to work with the Six Row Bali because of the quality of the whiskey that we get. 
What are your thoughts? Do you like it? Good start. It's really, really nice. I was quite surprised. I don't really know what I was expecting out of Indian whiskey, but I must say I'm very impressed already. <laughs> feel, feel free feel free to drop some water if you want to. Uh, for me, I've, I've tried this many times. I, for me, it is, um, it is good the way it is at 46 uh, for my palate. Uh, but if you think it's a bit, uh, bit strong, then always feel free to drop a few drops of water and see it open up more. Yeah, you've got a very nice mouth on it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one good thing which I see in this whiskey is uh, looking at the range that we're going to try today as well. It has got this uh, uh, a long finish coming out from the whiskeys. Uh, the flavors linger for a, for a long uh, time. Uh, uh, so one of those whiskeys, uh, I'm picking up whiskeys from uh, from supermarket and for, for me personally as well, uh, you know, just bring up a whiskey and then sometimes they have got the short finish, which are uh, sippers. Like I always tell them it's an easy sipping whiskey. Like I, I will say with the Nirvana, for example, which is an easy sipping whiskey. This is one whiskey which you feel like you want to spend some more time with it. You just want, it's not, uh, you, you're enjoying it, but you just don't want to rush it, rush things over here. It opens up, It give it some time, you will see a lot more coming out from the drip. And how, how many whiskeys is your core range? Ooh, uh, eight today. Uh, eight today. Uh, one is the Nirvana, which is the entry level at 40%, which is the only which whiskey which is chill filtered. Uh, then the Brilliance, Edited, uh, you're going to try next, and the Bold, which are the flagships. And there are select cask, uh, four of them. We have three of them today. And it strikes me, I'm, I'm fascinated by this because my memories of Indian whiskey haven't always been good. I've always thought, had, you know, Cavalin, for example, is another example of tropical maturation, which I, I've not always been fond of. Um, but I suppose what I'm interested in this is, um, what's different, I suppose, is that you've got a, a special barley variety in some ways. And I'm wondering whether you use kind of high temperature yeasts as well. Um, but what strikes me in the main is with the accelerated maturation, you kind of get um, a higher proportion of wood influence compared with the more over bourbon flavors. So it's kind of like the balance of wood and vanilla is subtly tweaked. But anyway, I'm, think, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. I mean, I, I, to, to make it short, uh, I will always say this is more like, uh... Uh, the, there is uh, the Indian whiskies are more like uh, a bridge between a Scotch and American whiskey uh, to understand easy without trying it. If it is just lying on the shelf and say, what does it taste like? I would say it's something in between. It's a different whiskey. It will be very wrong to compare two distilleries coming from the same region as well uh, because they are all, they are unique and they are different. Uh, but I would say it's something in between on the flavor profile uh, to, to make it easier. Yeah, I mean, it's so it, it's sort of it's a, the thing to me is like you can always well I always think you can tell when it's kind of not Scotch, but it's hard to put your finger on describing how you know. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ravi uh, requested to to show the bottle, so that's the brilliance. Yeah, at forty six percent, it comes in a in a canister pack, which is kind of that color. The first and the second whiskies will come the same. This is the edited, but it will be brilliant over here instead in a similar color. Um, where, where is your main market? You said most of your market is in India itself. Hmm, interesting one. <laughs> India as a market has changed a lot in the last few years time. Um, Again, it goes way back to, to saying uh, that people will be more of a brand drinking, into brand drinking uh, and uh, label drinking, I would say, and it'll make it more easier and uh, not into whiskey. So it's very difficult to convince someone to try it. Uh, for us, uh, Nirvana is, is the game changer. Uh, we, we sell a lot of uh, Nirvana in the uh, domestic market, but in the code range, uh, the international market will be big. Uh, to compare between India and, and this uh, markets. Um, again, there are, it's, it's crazy out there because every state has got its own excise laws. 
Um, you cannot sell the 50% uh, above ABVs in all the states. So, you know, you can't reach to everyone uh, and the people have to try buy it only from certain states, uh, those particular whiskeys, uh, which are higher ABV. So it's tricky. Plus, at the same time, uh, people are not exposed uh, to, to different uh, scotch whiskeys because they are not in the country. It's not available. Um, like you don't find what you see over here in the store. Uh, that's one of the, uh, and the reason behind that is the taxation in the country. It's huge. So there are not many brands who want to get into the market. Uh, so for someone who is new, it is different, uh, you know, uh, unless you're traveling and, and understanding. So for us, Nirvana is a game changer is because people who have been drinking labels all day, all their life and, you know, just um, drinking blends, maybe we will just go them and go to them and say, this is a single malt. You know, it's different. Try it out. And Nirvana is a stepping stone to the range for, for us. So uh, market, to answer the question, uh, it's kind of, uh, as I said, Nirvana sells a lot more in India and uh, the core range sells a lot in, in the international markets. Give you guys an example, a bottle of black label in most of the states in India, it's roughly about 50, 55 pounds. Yeah, the only place where it will be cheaper will be Goa, which is <laughs> 30 pounds a bottle. Uh, it's about 3,000 rupees. And uh, the, the various reason to start with, Goa is also called as the party capital of India. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and where would this figure in that kind of cost price and in, in like a bottle in India, what would this cost? Uh, the brilliance uh, will be almost similar to, to other uh, states like Maharashtra or, or Delhi. It will be similar or even more. Uh, but uh, in Goa, it is the only state which is uh, cheaper than this, cheaper than the, this market, just because you're, you're not taking it out of the state. It's yeah, I'm just trying to work out where your price range is. Is it in kind of competing with blends or single malts or no, in, in India itself? Will be, I mean, uh, if, I, if, I, uh, I will, if I pick up uh, the only the Goan market, let's say, to start with. The brilliance will be similar or maybe even cheaper than a black label mm. yeah, in the market. Uh, the brilliance, the one you're trying. I mean, this was the last time I checked. The prices must have changed now. But let's say similar on the same lines as a black label. But uh, just because it is made in Goa and you don't end up paying more taxes, the, the, the state outside will be double the, the price. This but it, it's a tough one to convince someone to move on from a blend to a single malt. But that's a challenge, even being the same price point. <laughs> this is one of the things I wanted to ask you, Shelton, is why, why does India have so few single malts when a small country like Sweden's you know, exploded? They've got, what, is it more than 20 or something in the last decade? Whereas India's got, what is it, Paul John Amrit and um, Rampur, and you've got no shortage of billionaires who can just sort of like to have a play around and, and make some. You've got any climate you can pick mm -hmm. uh, from the Himalayas on down. So why are there not more single malt distilleries in, in, in India? Things are changing now to start with. Uh, there, are, uh, there are these three, there are a lot more coming out as well, coming from India. But uh, one of the things, as, as I mentioned before, it's not a big trend because people, uh, there, it's the, the biggest difference between a blend and a single malt is not a huge category. The people, single malt drinkers in India itself is not a huge category. The, the biggest category, uh, I mean, for example, there is a brand called as, uh, we have a brand as a company, which uh, is called as uh, Original Choice, the name of the brand. It's a blended whiskey. Original Choice. Seventh whiskey, biggest brand in the world, that one, isn't it? That's, that's Officer's Choice. This is the fifth or sixth biggest one, uh, Original Choice. That brand sells 1 million cases a month. 1 million cases a month. That's how big that brand is. Uh, that's, now, that's an economy I'll, segment. I'll, I'll share a couple of pictures so you guys get an idea of what India bloody sells when it comes to alcohol. This, this, is, this comes in a Tetra pack. Now, that's a whiskey in there. It's, it's, like a, it's like a juice box. Oh, cool. I want to try one of those. Indian made, <laughs> what's it called? Indian made foreign liquor. Yeah. Indian Two and made foreign liquor. bottles a year. It's, it's called as the IMFL, which is a a weird name, uh, Indian made foreign liquor. <laughs> yeah, so that was one of my other questions is, can you please recommend one? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there, are, there are some uh, 
uh, I started off with not with this, but some other brands uh, drinking whiskey because that's what you get easily. There will be stores in the country uh, which uh, the most expensive whiskey on the shelf could be a wet 69 or a black and white, which is uh, around 800 rupees or 1000 rupees, maybe like 10 pound a bottle, uh, which is the most expensive one. And the rest all below that, that's two pound a bottle, three pound a bottle you get um, in the market. Now in that category, if that is the biggest seller, why will a producer want to come up with expensive whiskey and then struggle to sell um, unless it is export? Amrut has done a great job with that. It's a big risk that they have taken getting it out because you never know how, how the world will uh, if, uh, accept it. Um, and it made a lot easier for other brands as well. Uh, that Paul John came in, Rampur came in. There are a few more coming out as well because they, now everybody knows that India makes whiskey and it's easier. But at that time, why will a producer make a whiskey where you do not know if it's going to be accepted out of India? And, and in India itself, first of all, you need to wait for three years plus to get the liquid ready and sell it of your investment coming out. So that was easier, <laughs> you know, this is just a blend. You buy, you buy the blend, you add flavors and colors to it and just sell it off. But I think the Asian markets in general always go by blends, don't they? I mean, that's, that's where our, most of our blends go to is the Asian markets, yeah. right through India, right through uh, Japan even. Um, I mean, the Japanese love the blended stuff and a lot of their single malts are actually produced just to be blended because they prefer a much uh, more refined, um, balanced drink. I mean, if you look at the blends that has been exported from here, from Scotland, which goes into India, I mean, the liquid spirit, uh, the malt spirit, which goes into India, 80% of that is not even bottled. It goes into blends straight away. It's all been used for blends. Uh, and that's how uh, many of the brands have started, just because of the high taxes, they have started bottling it in India. So send the bulk liquid and you do the bottling in India to reduce the cost. I mean, you will find a black and white over there. I've never seen a black and white over here in the shell. <laughs> You'll find okay. a black and white in a wet 69 over here, which is a blended Scotch whiskey, but on the label, it's been it's written clearly, it's been bottled in India. So it's bulk liquids and across and bottle it in India. That's, uh, that's the only way of uh, saving on the taxes. <laughs> I think um, Singleton uh, from Scotland, uh, very, very hard to find here, but uh, most of it's sent over to Asia for the Asian market because they love it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, will, I just uh, saw Ravi's comments coming up as well, and, and I totally agree. It's a very price conscious market at the end of the day. You know, it's, uh, that's why Nirvana plays the game. Nirvana in Goa itself is 1,500 rupees, so it's like 15, 15 pound a bottle in Goa. I mean, in, in Mumbai, it will be. 30, which is the same over here. But so to convert someone who's drink, been drinking blends and to get them into single malt, that is it. It's easy. It's saying it's a single malt and it's same price or cheaper. Um, it, and as at the moment you say cheaper, it, that's it. It's sold out. <laughs> Are we good with this? Yeah. But to move on, the second whiskey is called as Edited. Shilton, just one thing. Yeah. How much is how much is a black bottle in India? Which one? Uh, the Viaggio black black bottle. The black label. Yeah. It uh, uh, well, we said it before. Uh, it, in in Goa, it was about thirty, uh, but uh, I think in other states, in Maharashtra, and all the places, uh, should be somewhere around fifty and sixty. What is 50 and 60? 50, 50, 60 pounds a bottle. Really? Yeah. That expensive? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How much is Shivers 12? Similar. Okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll be the same. That's mental. So, yeah, uh, um, edited, same age. Again, uh, American Oak. Uh, can I guess the age? I'll say six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Spot on. It's, it's, it's five and six, <laughs> five and six. Uh, but what you need to guess is the ABV. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there is a little difference in this compared to the other one. Uh, it's, it's almost similar. 
on the on the flavor profile, but there's a there's a slight difference on this. And what is it? I'm going to say this is less ABV, about forty three percent. Peat. Peat, yeah, definitely. Peat, definitely. Peat. So it's uh, lightly peated. So it's uh, with a hint of peat. It's a mix of. Uh, uh, I would say it's it's more like 70% unpeated whiskey and 30% peated whiskey in it. That's why it's lightly peated. It's a right whiskey for uh, 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 for a lot of uh, as an entry level uh, into peat. Uh, someone getting into peated whiskeys, I think that will be a good start. I mean, I love peated whiskeys myself, and every time you get out in the market or in a bar and you see a peated whiskey, you like it. You always recommend that to your friend. And you end up your friend walking out saying, I'm never going to try a peated whiskey again because you have given him a heavy peated whiskey. <laughs> so that's a good start, I say, uh, added it, um, slightly peated. Uh, we, we say it's with a hint of peat. Um, ABV, I've seen the guesses on there. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's at 46% ABV. It's at 46% ABV. It's, it's the same thing, uh, same uh, similar whiskey, similar ABV, like the one you tried before, it's part of the flagships. 46% uh, ABV, it's got this uh, a bit of nice minty notes on this one. I don't know how many of you guys get it. It's all, uh, I mean, I personally find there's minty notes coming out. But the, the peat is not overpowering the whiskey. That's a great job. It's a nicely balanced whiskey. Um, the, the peat isn't overpowering um, uh, the, the liquid at all. It is at the back. You, you, I struggle to find it on the nose, uh, on the palate. Just when you when you sip it down, uh, that's when you uh, uh, when when you sip it down. That's when the peat comes back to you on this one. I mean, you know, for people who like heavy peated whiskeys, uh, can even uh, will also stand up and say, "I don't find any peat in this." That's how likely it is. So, can I just check then? It's the apart from the extra percentage of uh, peated barley, it's basically. The same yeast, the same process, and and is, is there a slightly different cask regime? It's just, I mean, let, it's, it's the same thing. I would say like let's take brilliance, which we which we tried, uh, and it's seventy five percent brilliance and twenty five percent peated. Uh, yeah. We do not get peat in India, uh, uh, so we to make a peated whiskey for us at Paul John, we ship the peat from Scotland and take it to India, keeping the barley local. So it's still a six row barley, even in the peated <coughs> whiskies, um, the, any peated whiskey you're gonna try from Paul John, they're all Indian barley. To make a peated whiskey, we ship the peat over from Scotland and take it to India and do the malting. All right, Shilton. Uh, on the other hand, Amrut ships peated barley from here. Yeah. They, they don't ship the peat. They actually buy the peated barley from Scotland. They, 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 so that's um, fusion is the one which they do it right, yes, and that's uh, probably the one of the one of the reason for the name as well. I'm just guessing the fusion of two different. I'm just going to jump in there quickly. Uh, Nicholas just asked a question: What's peat? Uh, peat is what they use to uh, basically smoke the barley and give it a smoky flavor. That's where you you get these smoky whiskies. Um, so in Scotland, Brian, he's playing with you. Oh, okay. No, he's saying... <laughs> no, no, no. He's saying, what, Pete? I don't taste any peat there. Oh, okay. That's how I, that's how I took it anyway. <laughs> I might get it wrong. Or Pete, his mate Pete, he can't taste his mate Pete in there. No, so yeah, it's it's very lightly peated. It's a nice, well-balanced uh, peated whiskey, uh, peated dram. Uh, got a lot of this minty notes, chocolatey, minty. Uh, this is one of the dreams. I mean, the, the beauty about uh, a whiskey is uh, that every time you try something, it just triggers a memory. You know, it just takes you to a place or, or something you had. And every time I, I sniff this and, and have a dream of that edited, the first thing which comes to my mind is after it, chocolates, which is a chocolatey and minty together. So that's something which comes to my mind straight away. Uh, but yeah, what, what are your thoughts on this? Is it... Is there someone who do not like peated whiskey and think that this is okay to start? I mean, yeah, I'll call that. I don't like peat, but this is very really nice. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very nice balanced peat. It's yeah. not uh, it's not something overpowering, as I said. And the peat it only warms you up later on once you sip it down. It just comes back slowly. I mean, you will see something at the end as well today. 
uh, which is a big a big uh, dream but this is something which i i like as a as a really movie. nice i like it i agree for me this little uh, hint of smokiness on this is uh it's just a little bit over the uh, brilliance uh, i prefer this one i must admit I mean, the whole idea of doing that i mean if you look at the range itself uh, um, the range in Baljon, there is uh, it's different style of whiskies. There's no much difference on the ages, but uh, it's a style of whiskey that we look for. And that's the main reason is so that there is a whiskey for everyone. Uh, and, uh, for example, someone says, I do not like peated whiskey. I will say, try that. Someone says, I like big, more peated whiskey, try something else. So it, there is a, a, a style of whiskey. And th that was the whole idea of coming up with this. I like this whiskey. Uh, if I had to pick between the two, I might go slightly on this one <laughs> just because I like peated whiskey. I might be okay, you know, just because of the love of peat. But Brilliance is a good starter for me and, and peat is the next level. Uh, the editor is the next level from there. That's Anyone who do not like this? Is it is uh, uh, the, the, is there anyone who wants to? How many of you li like big peated whiskies? Like more the more the peat happier. Okay. <laughs> I I can I can call you guys my good friends from today. <laughs> let's let's start dreaming more. <laughs> what, what I really like about this one is that I can definitely tell the similarity between the two. I think the peach just added like a layer of complexity, which which the previous one, while lovely, like has really benefited from. I think is uh, I can sort of keep going back to this, whereas I feel like with the the brilliance, I was kind of like, yeah, I get that. It's really nice with this. I'm sort of finding new things still, just sort of going back to it. Yeah, I think it's as 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 you said itself. I mean, it's it's a right balance. You know, it's it's a, something similar like the brilliance, but then that bit of that beat, that a little twist on it, just gives that extra. But it's very nicely done, <laughs> uh, very nicely uh, balanced. That's a good thing. It's not something which which went off, uh, and then people don't like it. But I I like it. I um, chuck a quick question in here, uh, Shilton, or, yeah, or um, what do these two uh, retail for in this country? Oh, I will call in Robbie there. <laughs> uh, uh, somewhere around uh, 42 ish, I think. That's that's yeah. edited. Yeah. So they they both are read, well, RRP on them is uh, 42 pounds. But thanks to Drink Supermarket, Ravi, I think he's doing for thirty-eight pounds. If I'm not wrong, Ravi, where is he gone? On to uh, check his stock levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I believe he's doing it. For Sorry, on mute, on mute. <laughs> yeah, there. Both of these are um, regular retail price is approximately forty pound, um, which is pretty good value for. Um, an international single malt um but with your discount code on this particular one yeah 10 percent off so you save about four quids about 36 pounds you do That's also find it i believe if i'm not wrong i think one of the supermarkets possibly waitrose stocks it um but you will see uh paul john a lot more readily available as well because of um the distribution agreement that they've got in place now which i think kicked in Late last year, um, yeah, or yeah. Mid -long, midway through last year. So gonna, yeah, we'll started off in September, somewhere around September, and it's not uh, any any more available in the supermarket, uh, which was uh, MNS Marks and Spencer. It yeah. was in there, but it's not available anymore. I think they're looking to add it to one of the uh, okay uh, back into the supermarket chain, but yeah, because it's going to a new distributor, I think. Um, you'll start to see it available in a lot more places, especially some premium um, restaurants and stuff like that. I think a lot more Indian restaurants, there's going to be a lot more focus on them, especially the high-end ones and hotels and stuff. So, yeah. Because it's relatively young, isn't it, Paul John, to the UK market, I believe, yeah. Yeah, we started in 2012. Yeah. 2012 is when we started, so it's, it's not there for a long time. No, in the UK. Yeah, the in the UK, previous everything was imported, right? Yeah, it, we, we launched in the UK in 2012, um, not the whole yeah. range. Uh, we just came out with the two of them uh, and, and a single cask. And uh, yeah, uh, it's just growing in the market. I think the last uh, 2016, 17, 
is when we were actually available in more stores and, and widely mm-hmm. distributed. And duty-free as well. You'll start to see, I reckon, now more in the duty-free outlets as well. Obviously, yeah, we are looking, looking for it. Travel. Yeah, it, we are looking for it uh, in the in the duty-free as well to work with. Uh, we've not started anything yet in the European markets, but yeah. 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 Okay, cool. It's, it's, yeah, I think Ravi, Ravi, you know very well it's not easy to get in there. <laughs> no, it's not. But, but I mean, obviously, right now, every like the whole lot previous year has changed everything. But going forward, I think definitely there there will be a lot more scope. And you, I think Paul John, what High Spirits will do for it, yeah, I think you'll get a lot more visibility in the UK now. In the UK, yeah, There's yeah, already definitely. working with a with a, a lot of uh, started working with a lot of Indian restaurants in London to get yeah. uh, the brand on board. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Uh, all good with the edited. Any, any, any more questions? I, that I'll to... just go back to something you mentioned earlier. Um, you asked, uh, you mentioned earlier about the average temperature and the high temperature, but going up to about forties. What's your sort of like low point temperature in the warehousing or at a distillery? No, well, uh, as uh, well, the the average is twenty three. I mean, in Goa, uh, well, I, I say average twenty three and twenty five. Uh, in Goa, the lowest uh, it could go is up to 17 or 19 in the month of December. That's what we call as winter. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'd, be, I'd be very happy if I see 17 and 19 over here. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, 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 and in December in Goa, you will see certain people wearing uh, monkey caps and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and blazers and, or, or jumpers and stuff like that. It's uh, so 17 and 19 is the lowest uh, for us. Uh, at the same time, we uh, we we have got uh, warehouses. Uh, at at the, our warehouses, we have got four today. Uh, three of them are on the ground, and one is underground. Uh, the underground has got a fewer number compared to the other ones. It's, it has got about 3,500 cask uh, in it, uh, and uh, the underground warehouse is uh, where you find more of most of the limited editions coming in. Uh, it's There's no much of a difference, but uh, the humidity will be less. The one on the ground, there's more air circulation uh, in the warehouse. They are open uh, warehouses. The one on the ground is closed. So uh, trust me, that's my favorite place at the distillery every time I go. I just walk in and every time they're having any meetings, I always say, can we have the meeting downstairs in there? <laughs> because that smells amazing because it's a closed, uh, and you mentioned that heat. So you can just smell it. Uh, there's no much of our air circulation. So the whiskeys uh, tend to be a bit different. Um, you'll see a lot uh, more creamy texture to it, uh, more uh, of a mellowy character to the whiskeys which come from the underground. Um, and the ones above will be a bit more robust because of the uh, humidity and because of the salt in the air and the, and the climate. And do you get less um, angel share from the one underground because it's more controlled? It's, it's not a lot, uh, Wayne. It's very, I mean, uh, that's why we always say it's 8 to 10, in between 8 to 10. Nothing less than that. I mean, there's no much. Uh, it can be even higher at times. Um, and some, some of the whiskey just disappeared. Uh, uh, tr- there was one of the single casks, a classic example, is we were uh, going to uh, do a single cask, a 200 liter cask, a barrel. And when we emptied it in five years time to do it, we only got 90 liters out of it. You know, when I, I've, I myself have not even visited the distillery. In the, <laughs> so it's not me who has drank it all. So that's that's when, you know, it just nobody knows what's happened with it. Um, and it just goes off with the temperature. Uh, and yeah, 8 to 10% a year is a lot. And with the higher, when it shoots up, like for example, 45 at that time, it just goes off. Uh, but the whole idea of coming up with the underground warehouse for Michael, uh, the dist- Michael uh, Master Distiller, is because when he started off, he just wanted to try it out. You never know, you're risking it, you're putting up a distillery. So let's try different places and see what turns out. So, yeah, uh, that was the uh, edited. Uh, if you're good to go for the next one, uh, I will say just have some water to cleanse your palate a bit or a beer, sip, whatever, whatever you fancy. <laughs> Are you sure it's a climate? Shelton, because you know, you know they've got these things called whiskey thieves here that you put down your trousers. The 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 other whiskey thief, I've uh, I mean the only time I will say last year, 
the angel share has not been much because uh, uh, me and Craig, my colleagues, have not visited the distillery. <laughs> yeah, I think there's too much sampling going on there sometimes. <laughs> too much sampling. But, but luckily, luckily, Shulton, you see the, for example, the edited that we have tried, Ravi has pulled out one of his vintage one. It's a 2016 batch. Yeah. And uh, so... You know, definitely you guys have been visited around that time. So we're sure that, you know, a bit of share is extra taken out of those. Yeah. If, if it is, uh, what batch is it? Did you say 2014? 16. 16, okay, yeah. So 2016, that uh, 2016 will be the age difference in it. Um, that, that's one, uh, that one is on the age will be four and five. Yeah, it's it's batch batch number three. Yeah, that will be four and five. Now we are on five and six in the recent ones. Cool. Uh, the next one is a special one. Um, it's a limited edition. It's a single cask. It's a single cask bottling. Um, this has been uh, exclusively bottled for uh, for the UK. You will find this in the UK only. Um, available out here. We did this uh, two years back, two years back or three years back, I think. Uh, 2017, yeah, 2017 is when this was bottled. Uh, so young, uh, again, uh, five years old, unpeated, uh, uh, non-peated whiskey, American oak, ex bourbon, first uh, first fill bourbon cast, but. This is, is a beautiful dram. There is one whiskey which is uh, missing in the range, which is classic. And me and Yash was talking about what do we do? And then this came up, uh, which was very close to the classic. Uh, and I will say, I, I will pour this uh, to someone to, to tell more about what the distillery character is. Again, this is a lot of tropical fruits going on over here. Uh, it's a high, okay, guess is on the ABV as well. Go. Go for it. <laughs> it's a single cask. Remember, that's, that's a hint. It's not watered. It's, it's not been watered down at all. So it's a cask strength. It goes straight away from the cask to the bottle. That's your hint. But this this builds up a lot. I mean, I will say not to. I mean, if it's in your, if it's all poured in your glass, leave it aside. You can still go back to it later on. Something which needs time to open up. It's it's higher ABV. Uh, I can see some nice <laughs> comments coming in. Oh, oh, funny, funny how Ravi is actually answering there when he's got the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. This is um, Ravi is probably not sitting with a bottle in front of him, I guess. <laughs> no, it was a good one, Ravi. You're going straight away with the liquid. Uh, this uh, ABV on this is 60% ABV. So, well done to Tom and Leon. They got it spot on. So that's your that's your bottle. Uh, oh, we don't have the bottle. Yeah, that was done by that was done for Gordon McPhil, uh, Gordon and McPhil bottling. Uh, that uh, when we were distributed uh, to Gordon McPhil. I have the bottle here. So yeah, it's it's something. I mean, you you might find and in, in some stores, but this is a big uh, a big whiskey. A lot of tropical fruits coming in a way. You can get some bananas, mangoes going on. I mean, this is... Uh, Jilton, there's a picture on the background. Yeah, that's a famous, uh, that's a famous painting uh, of uh, that Mario Miranda painting. Uh, it's, it's a Mario Miranda's painting, which, I mean, if you, if you visit Goa, you will find that in many, many places. Um, you, you'll find that uh, in, in many places across Goa. It's very famous for, for this. Um, but, yeah, it's... Um, it's an, uh, it's it's uh, it's a lovely big dram. It opens up a lot. It opens up a lot with time, with a, a few drops of water, maybe if you want to. But uh, I I love this. I will if you're trying this for the first time. I will say before you finish it off, uh, do recommend to add a drop of water and see how it changes. 
think this is lovely, Shilton. I'm getting a little bit of rum and raisin on it, and um, the the finish is just like never ending. It it just keeps sliding down your palate. I think it's beautiful. If you, and if you give it a good chew, Wayne, it just blows off. When you, the more you chew, it just blows off. It's a lovely rim. That sweetness. Oh, I, I saw someone mentioning coconut, which I get as well in this one. Um, can we have a price, please? Oh, you can't buy it. Damn. Okay. Uh, That's well, it. Uh, 120 I've, pound. Yeah, I've seen it for about 120 quid. Yeah. I've seen it for, it's still, there are some places where you might be able to find them. Yeah, you can uh, buy a house malt. About, about 120. Yeah, this, this were uh, around 192 bottles, if I'm not wrong. About uh, 100. I, I had I had eleven of them. I have I have one one left now because one I used for the tasting. Well, I'm very glad you had a spare one there, Yash. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not selling that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Like the, the nose is so rich, and then once it hits the palate, it just it's it's even more. It's insane. I, was, I didn't realize that it could have much more kick than it already had. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's at sixty percent ABV as well. I'm, uh, a drop of water will mellow down that whiskey a lot. You know, it just open up a lot more, get more creaminess to the whiskey. It will change. Um, I mean, because when you give it a that good chew, it just the the, the big ABV hits you, uh, in the, in the initially. But then when you take it down, you can see so many fruits, fruity notes coming out. It's very fruity for me. Um, uh, tropical. Uh, this is that's why I say this is more like Goa, uh, something very close to the classic. Uh, but lovely place. Call me an old romantic, but there's something about this whiskey that is just stupendously international. I mean, it's kind of not Scottish, um, but but there are sort of hints of hints of sort of rampur going on in there. But never mind that. And you know, obviously bourbon notes. Um, but it and it's uh, it's sort of it has this tropical maturation vibe about it. But there's I think what one of the things I particularly like about it. Is is it sort of genuinely hard to place? Could be from anywhere. It's a kind of essence. It's a, a true world whiskey, uh, worthy of the name. If you see what if you see what I'm driving at. Yep, and that's 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 why that's why I would say if I had to pick one and say Shilton, if I am um, someone walks to you at the stand and says if I have this lineup, or today's lineup, and says I just want to try just one whiskey Shilton, I don't I cannot try all of them. I would say try this. Uh, to really understand what Paul John is about, I would say try this one. I um, what I like about this, I don't uh, necessarily agree with whiskies that release at high ABV for the point of releasing at high ABV. Uh, and I think with this, you, you you taste it, you don't get tons and tons of overwhelming alcohol, but the ABV just brings the flavours through in in like a massive punch, and it really yeah. it drives through those layers of flavour rather than just being high alcohol for the for the sake of being high alcohol. And and it, it, I just really like it when it when they get it right, when you get it right, and something like that, and you could say to someone that's sixty percent, and they'll go, no way, because they're expecting it to burn their face off. Um, but it just gives you so much of that flavour. It's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. This one. That's, that's exactly what I was saying as well, Ben, uh, because when you have it on your palate, the first thing it hits up with, hits you off with the, with the alcohol with the first few seconds. But then as you just take the sip down, you can see a lot more the alcohol goes off. But then you can see it, uh, uh, see a lot more flavors coming in as well, the wood influence coming in. It's not only the alcohol. Uh, it's not something which is very high on ABV and you're just drinking it to, to you know, for the ABV sake, the way you said. But it has also got a lot more character to the, to the liquid itself on the flavors. Uh, which it's, that's why that's why I would say if, if I had to pour one I would say try this uh, as, as a Paul John Graham. Uh, sorry I thought I think I might have missed this but what age is this one? That's a six years old whiskey. Six year old yeah, yeah. amazing. It's stunning for a six year old whiskey isn't it? I mean for me that the finish just keeps going. I mean, it's 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 one of those uh, I would class as you can go to the toilet, have a pee, come back, and you're still tasting this whiskey, <laughs> even though you've never drunk any for a while. Uh, uh, and and you, you'll see a lot more coming out. Water into this one, and just just see what comes out of it. Well, the water's really added some depth to it. That, that was really nice. It's sort of it's not quite as explosive on the palate, but those flavors are sort of like you know they're kind of like just milling around a little bit more, like seeping into your, into your tongue a lot better. Really nice.
Hi guys. You hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've had um actually I've had three bottles of this. This is the best example I've had of it. If you had it with just a splash of water, the flavours on the end is never ending. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I might have to start searching for a fourth. Leo, you see you've had three bottles. Is that three different batches or is that three bottles of the same batch? To be three or was bottles. there only ever one batch? Well, uh, well it's a single cask. So a single cask. It's a single cask. So basically, um, yeah. I bought two from the whiskey exchange and the other one was Master of Malt in the space of probably about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And I, yeah, I feel also, I think also, say to show Showing our whiskey show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. This was bottled in um, November 2017. So should be here by, oh, by 2018. Yeah. Between you and Yash, it's amazing any bottles got sold. No, it's uh, the thing is, uh, we don't, uh, uh, not many people get a chance to try this whiskeys, uh, uh, the single cast, because it's not there in every tasting. Unless you are at a whiskey show, and and you have to be very nice to the person behind the stand as well to get to get something special <laughs> from the under under the counter drams they call we call it. So it's um, not not something which uh, which you, a lot of people have tried. So I mean, if you try it now, we'll see you love it. It's a lovely dram. It's, and, um, and I, I have all the single costs. There, I think I have most of the right, Shulton. I have most of yeah. the single costs ever been. Uh, introduced by Paul John all around the world and uh, you know uh, there's been times where to get certain things I've paid silly money for it I've paid over 200 pounds for a bottle for example of I think uh, that was the Sweden one wasn't it Shulton? Yeah the the, the one we, they did for Sweden uh, correct yeah. and then we did another small bet for Sweden as well the one which you got it uh, which I which I brought with me when I was traveling remember <laughs> the the new one but uh, yeah, I mean, Yash has got, uh, uh, I think, the most of the of the single cask, which uh, from Paul John, which I myself don't have. We do not have it at the distillery as well. Um, and he's been picking up from different. We do one in every country to make it more easier to understand. There will be one which is for Belgium. There will be one for Germany. Uh, and then there are some whiskey clubs as well that we do work with. So they always find one. You will always find one with a different name on the front, maybe a, a, a logo of the of the club or something. That's how we worked. It, Wayne, that's an opportunity here. And <laughs> and all the new ones will come in a nice wooden box like this. Yeah, these are the, the new ones which we have. The, the boxes have changed now, uh, and that's a different packaging. Uh, uh, with the logo on it as well, yeah. Was that for your core range or? No, the, the, that's for the single cast. It's a single cast. Oh, 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 okay, okay. And it's heavy. You pay extra weight. So I got yeah. mine for Europe because that one was the Cyprus edition and it cost me a lot more on the shipping. I've, I've just saw a question coming up from Ed, uh, uh, and and yes, just just uh, do me a favor. You can keep an eye on the chat. I, I might keep missing on, on a few questions, but there's one from Ed uh, asking about how does Belgium work as a whiskey market. Um, it's it's a great market. Uh, the only thing is that uh, the the challenge over there is again the taxes because it's high. But the good thing is that it's a small country. You can drive and you're out of Belgium in two hours' time. <laughs> so you don't have to buy from Belgium if you, if you want something. But uh, there are some great whiskeys, even the Scotch uh, whiskeys I have seen uh, uh, in, the, in the industry, that you find a lot more. Uh, people say that the single cast that the guys, they're very, very much, uh, they, they know their stuff, the consumers, they know what they are, they are buying. The single cask or special editions, you find some of the great, fantastic single cask out in Belgium. Uh, but the only thing is that the taxes. Uh, but again, just drive. You're in Luxembourg. The cheapest you will find in Luxembourg. So it's easy. People are used to it. But it's a big market. It's a big market. Maybe they are not buying in Belgium, but uh, it's all going in there. 
Nice. Um, I can go on with this. I will go back to it as well later on. So I'll leave it over there in my glass uh, to open up. Anyone, anyone who do not like it? Do you think it's a bit high on your ABV? I mean, it's okay. Or maybe something else that you don't like it? It's all for sure. It's the worst jump I've ever had. Sorry, you were saying something, Nicola. I just put off my speakers in the last 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you talking. I'm it's beautiful. <laughs> my glass is empty. Um, I think it's great, but I'm on the fence. I do prefer the classic. <laughs> so, okay, the this is an ABV one. This can only come from someone who's tried the classic earlier. <laughs> <laughs> No, the classic is uh, classic for me is uh, is always uh, one of the brand, uh, one of the I mean from this lineup. That's why I said before, if someone had to say from this lineup I can only try one, it will be this one, or if I have the normal one at a festival, I will always pour the classic. Classic mm. for me is always been um, I, uh, I I say that it is Goa in a bottle for me. It reminds me of home, that tropical fruity notes. It's like a fruit salad. It, it's, it reminds me of Goa every time I have a sip of that. So classic for me is always there. It's, it's a wetting of, uh, it's a small batch. It's a wetting of carefully selected cask from the underground warehouse by Michael. So it has got this nice creamy texture to it and a lot fruity. So that's why I will pick up the classic. But that's why I said, if you say that, then it can only come. The only company to do this whiskey is a classic. And only someone who's tried it can understand. Yeah, now, originally, we were going to use classic. Uh, Shilton wanted to use classic, but Ravi was out of stock. Classic, uh, he did receive some, but he, he all flew out. And uh, so he didn't have any classic left. And hence, me and Shilton in the end decided to put in a single cask. But Yash, you probably got more stock. I, I've only got one classic left, to be honest. And it's a very old one, so I didn't want to bring that one out. It was batch one, I guess. I think I've got batch one. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you for not sharing. <laughs> it, it, I'm sorry, if only one. You guys already know the rules. I only open a bottle if I have a spare. Well, well, the the also good thing is that yes, thank you for for opening this one uh, as a four six eleven um, compared to compared to the classic. It was a pleasure. The the, the classic is still, there are there are many opportunities that people can still try the classic many times maybe at a show or a tasting and it's easy available, but that's a that's a rare one. So uh, I mm. I I did not try it. I had an open bottle. I did not try it for a long time now, and today I'm just revisiting it again. Shilton, do you say this at every whiskey club that opens a single cask? Yeah, well, in, in especially especially when especially the, I mean, not not the virtual ones. I I end up doing it uh, in the virtual. I ended up buying a lot more whiskey in the last year than any of the of the years. Uh, but uh, during the any any tastings, I mean, one of the example I was doing a tasting in Sheffield, and Paul Damsey from Spay uh, was having a bottle of mine. Uh, which he brought from me from uh, from Germany. It was going into my collection, a single cask. And he said, Shilton, that's a bottle. The testing was over. I just opened up that bottle and said, let's share it all. <laughs> that's it. Ah, <laughs> good. <laughs> that's what whiskey is for. Nice one. So uh, are we good to move on to the next one? Yes. So let me ask you a quick question there. Um, what has uh, Paul John got in the... Um, in the cellars that's new that's coming out is there anything special next year end of next year i can answer that one no there is something coming there's there's a there's a, there's a lot coming out <laughs> uh, some something new uh, there is the, the recent one which has just come out is uh, the mituna which is a zodiac series uh, which is matured in the, which is matured in uh, virgin oak for four years and uh, two years in ex bourbon oh wow so that's a very different uh, dram. It's uh, it's a limited release. There are only seven thousand bottles of that produced uh, at the moment. And uh, for the collectors out there, this is number number two in the series of the zodiac signs. Yeah, there are there are twelve zodiac signs. The first one was the Kanya. Many people have tried it before in the shows uh, or wherever we we always had it with us. The Kanya, uh, and this is the 
Mituna, the second release. Kanya was released in 2018, and this is the second one. And there are, yeah, that's a that's a big bottle which Yash has got uh, uh, with him. It's uh, this is a limited one. Uh, Virgin Oak is something that we are working with Payne to answer that uh, to answer your question. Uh, the second thing is uh, we also do Christmas editions every year. I'm sure you must have seen that 2018 we did one, 19, 20, and this year we are coming out again. We are coming out with some port cask finishes. Uh, so you will the the next thing after Mituna you will see is the Christmas edition should be out here somewhere in September, which will have some port in it, uh, and the cask the select cask range which you're going to try from now the next three whiskies which will be also extended to a port uh, next year. So that's that's something which is coming out. And obviously being Indian whiskey, you're not constrained by the Scottish Whiskey Association rules. So is there any kind of uh, new cask types that you guys are looking into, delving into that uh, obviously Scotch whiskey can't go down that route because of the, uh, the rules? Uh, we have not, uh, not at the moment, there is no such plan that I can see, uh, at least in the next two years time, or maybe in the future, uh, to try some different cask. But yes, there are so many things that you can do, uh, that you can do. Uh, one of the, one of the example is uh, Amrut doing the Narangi, for example, uh, which, uh, which, which they did. Uh, I mean, there, if, if you ask me personally, I can think a lot of things uh, there is, but it's, it's, it's end of the day, it's, uh, the decision coming up from the up from up uh, but uh, you can do a lot of things india is known for the tea and the coffee which you grow so you well, can always play well, around well, and think about to that be honest uh, i would like to see paul john doing something like uh, spectrum that amrut has done yeah so you, you can you can always you can always play around with that and uh, using what the country is known for i would say like you you get the best of the tea you get the, you get the coffee in, in in places so why not I don't see why not. You can always do it, uh, but uh, th at the moment, I don't. I have not heard of any plans. Maybe in the future, uh, we are just extending. A rum cask is also in the plans as well in the in the near future. So the the nearest I can see is port, uh, uh, port, uh, port uh, Portuguese wine cask coming in, and the next is uh, rum cask coming in. The nearest Virgin Oak we have already got. It's a lovely dram. Uh, the, the Mituna, uh, maybe one of the, the one if you maybe want to include it in one of your tastings if you want to. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great dram. The Virgin Oak is, a, is really done well with it. And one, one last question is uh, how many times do you use your, reuse your barrels? Mm -hmm. For Paul John, we do it twice first fills and your second fills. Um, for but we we after the second fill we use the cask again for short maturations i will say uh, but the liquid is used for the indian domestic market uh, for the blends i mean as i said if you get import the blend if you import the malt spirit from scotland then this is the stuff uh, the thing what we use instead of that okay thank but you for paul john it is just first and second fills Nice one. So if we are good, uh, some water to just take off the alcohol. And uh, the next one is the, uh, the oh, next two. The next my, two. My personal favorite is the next one. The and, next uh, two. I mean, we were talking about how good the single cask is. And trust oh, me, yeah. this is oh, something yeah. which you can just keep nosing on. This is uh, this is my whiskey romance. I, saw. Uh, I always say it's a, it's a whiskey romance. You just sit with it. And we just admire it, just keep nosing it. You just don't want to sip it as well. That's one of the dram. It's a new one in the edition, in the select cask range. Um, it is, uh, there are two of them, the Oloroso and the PX both came in together. We have not got much opportunities to get out and let people try because they're not, uh, this came out last year, uh, beginning of last year, and then we were on the lockdown. So nothing much happened uh, for people to try, but um, lovely dram. It just opens up. It's a, uh, the, the liquid is matured uh, for four years, uh, sorry, five years in American oak cask and two years in uh, Oloroso. Seven years old uh, liquid. Um, the, I mean, you look at the color itself, it's only two years in Oloroso and that's what you get in the color. 
lot of dried fruits, lot of dried fruits. In one word, I always, uh, I, I think this is nutty, chocolatey. Uh, we get a lot of chocolate and dried fruits over here. But I love the nose on this. I had poured it for some time now in the glass, but it just opens up a lot on the nose. Oh, yeah, cashew nuts for me. Very nutty. I yeah. agree with you there. I mean, Sultan, I got to say, you know, I, I love the Oloroso from the core range, but it's nothing like the single cask. No, no, nothing. No, we tried a single cask uh, before. So we had a uh, mm, oh, single cask that we tried before getting this one, before getting more cask uh, when we started off. Uh, we filled it up with uh, uh, three years old uh, liquid and left it for four years in that cask. We got 252 bottles out of it. Uh, well, 252 bottles, just one cast, selling out to the world, uh, just to see how it was, how how what journey is and what feedback we get. People loved it, and that's how uh, we ended up getting more Oloroso and PX this time, and coming it in the core range. So this is a this is a core range. Uh, it's a part of the select cask range. We we call the select cask, which is the classic Oloroso, PX, and Peter. Uh, ABV. What are your guesses on the ABV? Say uh, fifty. Mhm. Mm Close, I will say. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say forty-eight. Get like malt loaf on this, like malt loaf, and then some like really like dark raisins. I mean, I, I don't know why. I, it's, it's, it's a personal thing for me. This is my. If, if someone had to say, you know, this is my whiskey romance. I would love to sit with a glass of this, just nosing it and, and enjoying it. I can have a chat with someone, just keep talking to someone. And even if I'm not allowed to drink, I'm, I'm okay. I'm happy. But I just want to nose this. I just want to nose this. Mm, this, this for me is like beeswax. It's like old leather beeswax that you would put on a leather sofa. And um, the palate is it just so much kind of cashew nuts. Mm hmm It goes, it goes a bit drier. Of course, it's Oloroso. It it goes uh, it goes a bit drier, but uh, see again, you get this nutty, chocolatey, dark chocolate, which I can which I can think of on this one. Uh, ABV 48 percent ABV. <laughs> you get you get for, just for the liquid being two years in a Oloroso cask. Uh, I think it has got a lot. It's not. Uh, it's not taken it off as a big sherry bomb as well, uh, which which you see. Uh, I think it's a right balance. Uh, the maturing it in an ex bourbon cask before, and then getting it for two years has got the right balance of both. I think personally on this one, uh, I'm not a big sherry sherry fan myself. Like higher ABV sherry ones, I can. But this is okay. You get me a whiskey, any whiskey. In, in this much, uh, in this range, that ABV, not a high one, and this right balance, I'm happy. So this suits my palate, personally. Um, and I like it between this two, the next two. I mean, this two, this and the other one. If you really want to try, you can also do uh, something to learn and to understand. You can do uh, this two whiskeys side by side, the Oloroso and PX. It's, it's really uh, good to understand the two different uh, wine styles. Um, the Oloroso and the PX, uh, the different, they're very different. You can see on the nose and compare. Uh, if, if you are uh, checking out on both, uh, the, if you really want to do that, uh, the PX is, uh, it, it reminds me of, of the rum cakes my grandmother used to make when I was a kid. It has got a lot of these raisins, the rum soaked raisins that we used to get, which, which I get a lot in the PX. They're very, they're very different whiskeys. They're both, uh, they both came out together. Oloroso just builds up. What are your thoughts? What do you think on Oloroso? Lovely, absolutely lovely. I think it's lovely, yeah. Does anybody not actually like it? 
Is this too sherried for anybody? Tony, it's too sherried for you, is it? You, MC, you, MC Drama, you you're, you're on mute. Is this too sherried for you? you? I think you put your hand up for not actually liking it, right? Well, it's not that I don't like it. There's no whiskey I don't like, um, which is uh, my my problem, really. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've, I've never been keen on sherry whiskies. Um, it's... Uh, I don't, I don't know. I just it, it kind of polarizes my taste buds a little bit. Um, I like. I, I tend to get on better with full maturation sherry, but then still, it's it's not my go-to. I keep it. I keep drinking them. You know, it's. I keep drinking them and buying them. <laughs> um, What's but, your favourite so far then? What sherry-wise? No, of the what we've tasted this evening. Oh, of of, of these. Um, uh, well, so far it's a single cask, but I really enjoyed the edited as well. Edited is fantastic for lightly peated whiskey. There's um, something coming out I think you will like. Is the peated sherry? No, is that right, Shilton? You got something coming out? We 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 we've got some. Um, we have got some single cask. What what you was mentioning is that we have got some single cask, and you might see some. I'm actually looking out for and working with someone. Uh, with people in the market, uh, if there is anyone who wants to do is we have some Oloroso peated single cask. Uh, it could be good to do a bottling. No one's done it over here. Uh, the first Ooh, that, sounds, cask. that sounds good. Peated cherry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly how I reacted to that as well. When, when I came across this, so peated cherry, uh, we have uh, there is uh, the first one uh, in Europe is going to Poland for our distributor, the selected one, but we are looking for. Um, uh, so anybody who's interested, uh, we have got across, we have got some Oloroso peated single cask as well. Uh, very interesting to try. I have asked one of your samples to myself to see, or, uh, to try it out. But uh, yeah, because I love this and I love peated whiskeys. So, and I always- Can you ask to send some to Yash so he can sample it out as well? I mean, we'll, we'll be a tasting panel, no problem. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can we can sort out something. Wayne, uh, there's a lot of things which me and Ish always keep exchanging <laughs> the samples. <laughs> Good one, Oloroso. Have you, how many of you try? How many of you guys have tried it side by side and seen it? Seen the difference? Oloroso. I did. I, I prefer the Oloroso. It's uh, the PX, uh, the Pedro Jimenez is, is a little sweeter, of course, because of the wine style. Uh, but uh, the Oloroso is drier. If you had, if uh, if I had to compare uh, compare it both, uh, uh, the the PX for me is more like a dessert drink. You know, it's sweeter. You just want to have it end of the night. Uh, but if, uh, for me personally, being a peat lover, I will prefer a peated whiskey. So. It's nice, um, and as I said, on the nose itself, you get more of these raisins. It, as a, that's why I was talking about the rum-soaked raisins for the for the cake, the Christmas cake this store we used to make. So this is exactly what reminds me of that. I shall. Um, what's it? Do you think that Paul John would do a mix of the two, like seventy percent on a run, so thirty percent PX? No, I don't think so. No, it'd no. be hundred percent. Yeah. It, it will be, uh, I mean, it it will be kind of, uh, because there is Oloroso peated, there is PX peated as well. And there will be, that that makes it a, a bit more of the range of doing it. Unless you maybe do one as a single, one off single cast, something like that, or a small batch for someone. Uh, because there is the port coming in, there will be the port peated coming in as well. So with, with so much coming out in the range, uh, uh, Oloroso and PX together, I don't see that happening. Okay. Now this is this is interesting. If you, if you are trying the Oloroso and the PX, uh, this is so dry, isn't it? It it almost like sucks your taste buds in and yeah. turns them up on top of themselves. How many of you guys do prefer the PX over the Oloroso here? Anyone? I do. Yeah. Was it only because it's a tad sweeter? I'm more into the sweeter style. 
Yep. This is this is this oh, is both very good. They're both very good, but in terms of slight preference, but you're definitely you're definitely right on terms of like the dessert, the last one of the night where you just before you go to bed you want to have something sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is more like a like a dessert drink for for me if you ask me. You know, it's it's a um, I I don't I don't hate it. It's a nice whiskey. It's a, it's a I can see a lot of people loving it. Uh, and as I said, I will definitely have it uh, if it is uh, if it is in the in the in the bar or or on, as a dram. I will have it, but just sit back, relax. I'm not in the mood of a big peated whiskey today. I'll just sit back and enjoy it. It's a lovely dram. It opens up a lot. Um, but if I am forced to pick up between the two, I think I might pick up the Oloroso personally. I think I would be the same because I think this is. Uh, I mean, I love dry uh, wine, but this is just too much. It's almost like sucks your mouth dry. Yeah. It takes the, everything out of your mouth and kind of turns it upside down. Children, can I ask how uh, a question about um, how you? get on with Amrit. What's the relative sizes and sales like between you and Amrit? Oh, I suppose it must be your biggest competition. Uh, I don't, personally, I don't take uh, Amrit as a competition and I never took Amrit as a competition. Uh, this, uh, the main reason because they, it's a whiskey from a different region. Uh, it's, it's a very different whiskey. I love the Amrit fusion personally. It's a, it's a great brand because I love peated whiskeys. Uh, there's Amrut has been the first whiskey coming out uh, from India, and uh, it's an eye opener for a lot. So there are always people connected to that whiskey. I can see that it was the first Indian whiskey a lot of people have tried, and it's an eye opener. Um, it will be very wrong for me to compare and say which one is better because even the water are different. Uh, we are far away. We are about 600 kilometers away from Bangalore, and since we being very close to the sea, the water is different for us. So it's a different liquid, liquid-wise, uh, sales-wise. Uh, Amrut has been out in the market for a long time. They came out in 2004, and we came out in 2012. So it's a big gap uh, where they have been in the market out and, and working in. Um, it is not uh, a market. Uh, it, it, is, it is not uh, a competition for me. Uh, but sales-wise, they will be doing, they will be doing um, better, I would say, to, to answer the question about the sales. They will be doing better than Paul John at the moment. And putting all the serious stock aside, I always say this to people. Amrut is the best single malt whiskey I have tried after Paul John. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it you said yesterday, Shilton? <laughs> uh, Amrut is the best Indian whiskey. There is, no, there is, there is, is I, I said this to- greatest Indian whiskey. I like said it says to, on my t-shirt. I say this to promote and Ashok every time I meet them at the shows and we have this thing and we say, uh, you guys have been the first Indian whiskey. You've been the best Indian whiskey, but then there is a great Indian whiskey, which is us. <laughs> I think there's genuinely a strange feel that you are both, you know, Indian style whiskeys, but interestingly different. Yeah. Within that envelope, which which I think adds off to you, uh, which which reminds me of a, something I kind of wanted to ask. Um, so the whole Jim Swan thing, and I'm, uh, you know, all all respect him, and I kind of shed a tear when he passed and all that. But there is a sort of Jim Swan influence. So I'm wondering whether either Amrit or Paul John had have got a Jim Swan signature about them. Do you know that? No. Okay. Yeah. I'd, so I should have looked it up before we started. Yeah, you should have. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm joking. No, um, like, <clears throat> there is, he was involved in Cavalan, and you, you can almost, um, especially with the brand new distilleries, you can almost tell which ones. Is, involved Jim, with. Jim Jim Son was been has been working with uh, with Penderin, right? Is that what you're talking about? Penderin. He's been working with Penderin, uh, Cavalan, uh, Milk yeah. and Honey. You name uh, it. Yeah. Milk and Honey, and uh, yeah. Lindars. Annandale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of distilleries. Yeah. He's, he's, he, his influence has taken over loads of distilleries. Yeah. Uh, Kilhoman, uh, although in the early, just was consultant for a very brief period, like one day. Um, one day. I got, to, I got to admit something, though. When it comes to Cavalan Solis Sherry. 
Oh yes. I I I switch over. I forget the Indian stuff. I forget everything else. And yeah, Cavalan Solisheri is my thing. I mean, I think I've got God knows how many I've got, and uh, God knows how many. I think I've we had that on it. We we had we did a blind tasting with Cavalan. My my wife actually sorted. I didn't even know we were having it, and um, yeah, we did a like a club blind tasting for a lot of the founder members of the club and I I wasn't party to what was actually coming and um, it was all Cavalan. No, it was all, I wouldn't say it was all Cavalan. It was all um, uh, from the same place and there was... Taiwan. Ta Taiwanese whiskey. There was the... Um, Chinese Omar. government whiskey. There was Cavalan. I think Omar. we had the Cavalan sherry as well. Yeah, there, there's two at the moment. There's Omar, which is government owned, and then there is Cavalan. Mm, yeah, that's right. We no, no. I think we had three different ones. Then we had Omar, Cavalan, and I think there was a third one. I have a <laughs> third one. I, I mean, Yash, Yash talking Why about, I heard a lot of time when Yash has been talking about Kavalan to me and saying how much he likes it. Uh, and every time, uh, being an Indian, he likes uh, talking about Kavalan. I've got one word for him every time saying Gaddar, which is a traitor. <laughs> I agree with you. I'm going to go back on the Oloroso PX um, debate. I'm going to change my mind. I will go back to Oloroso. <laughs> No, the Oloroso actually opens up a lot, uh, Leo, with, does, time. Yeah. with time. Yeah, it needs some time to open up. And that's why it's I less said, drier yeah. and it's a lot more con um, complexity in terms of with air. Yeah. It is. Uh, um, and the, 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 right, the right term, I, I mean, uh, for me, it's always been a, a whiskey romance. With, to, with, uh, that's why I say it. you need some time. Just sit with it, let it open up, and you will just fall in love uh, with time. Uh, let it open up a lot. Um, Personally, I pick it up, and that dryness as well, which is there, like the nuttiness, um, the dark chocolate. I'm in love with that dream. Yeah, I, I definitely pick up the, the um, dark chocolate and the yes, the nuttiness. Good. Mm, the the cashew nuts mm. and the dark chocolate on the Oloroso, I think, were stunning. And also, the most important thing: no sofa. It's clean, clean sherry. I think the beer is just on the, spicy. I think we're on the uh, the last one that the petered select, right? Yeah. If we are if we are done with this, any any anything else, uh, guys? Any questions on this? Yes. Can we do a poll? Yeah, we do oh. a poll at the end of the night. This is exactly <laughs> this is exactly why Nicola is not allowed in whiskey clubs, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> Once we've tasted the last whiskey, Nikolai, we will. Uh, we have already. Just, I've already just, organized the poll. Don't just worry. to show you, just to show you, that's the Oloroso. I mean, that's the color in the bottle. If you heard. Oh to. wow, very dark. Natural yeah. color. Natural color. And that's only you two years, right? Total or the bottle. And the uh, and the Pedro Jimenez over here, the PX. They are, they are both natural color. And it was aged for two years, um, four years. Just two years, just two years in the in the in the wine cask. Uh, it's American it's oak. Real. It's it's again American oak, uh, but um, seasoned with the wine for three to four years time, um, and uh, only two years in that cask. So that two years has got got a lot in in, in that color, which is quite surprising. And that again reflects back to the the extraction rate from the wood, what we were talking about earlier, about the faster extraction. It's it's something which uh, a lot of time our guys say it's about to make it easy to for people who do not uh, understand uh, is to having two tea bags one in the hot water one in the cold water and see the extraction and see the uh, see how much you get from the hot water that's exactly what happens I heard I heard our Mike uh, Michael our master distiller saying today that uh, for us whiskey cooks <laughs> it, it, you know you, you get a lot coming in in a short time. Oh, wow, I just hated the Peter Select. Oh my God. Oh, my. <laughs> well, well, Peter... Shilton, from what I'm seeing from the chat, is you're going to have to put a date in your diary in the future because I think a lot of the guys are wanting to do some of the select cask, uh, special casks. Um, so I think we're probably going to do another tasting with you in the future. So once your baby's done and over, 
I think we're probably going to come back to you. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm up for it. I love doing it uh, because that is one thing. Uh, trust me, I mean, uh, people who know me in the industry knows that I love getting out there and having a chat and sharing a dream with people. Uh, and I would love to do it anytime you want to. Uh, let's uh, book in something and uh, pick up some different whiskeys. And if <clears throat> if traveling is allowed or if uh, if getting some whiskeys is uh, easy to get from uh, out of UK, then maybe pick up even one or two from somewhere, uh, uh, some whiskeys which are not available in the UK just for to see and compare. Absolutely. I think we'll, we'll uh, leave Yash sort that out. I, I do a lot of traveling because of my work, so... I can always pick up a few here, there, and everywhere as well. Yeah, no, no. I mean, no. It's, it's. I mean, I if I get start traveling again, I can always pick up. So not to worry on that. You know, I can always sort out something. Or there is Christmas editions. There are so many things that we can do. We can put up some different six whiskeys I can see in that lineup. Yeah, Shilton, I think we should have put up one of the Christmas editions onto this lineup. But... No, we have got the Nirvana, we have got the Bold, which we have not tried. One of the best sellers today, uh, Peter yeah. Whiskey, uh, the Bold. Uh, we have not got the Classic in, we have got the Christmas one. So there's so many yeah. things. We can We can also maybe get in the Mituna or the Kanya. Yeah. I find, uh, it, I find it quite interesting because I, I have a very good friend of mine uh, that I, I've worked with for many years over the over the my past career, who uh, he's an Indian friend and he comes from uh, Mumbai. Oh yeah. And he um, he loves whiskey. His his favorite is Bunnhaven, and I've taken. He he comes very often to London, and I meet up with him quite often uh, because he has family in London, and. Every time we go to a whiskey bar, he always tells me I don't like John Paul whiskey. And I'm quite surprised at that. After tasting tonight, being a, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's I'm going to throw, John John through, through whiskey, few whiskeys into him blind and just ask him to taste them. If he's drinking John Paul wine, he's probably drinking the little version. It's, uh, it's Paul John. Yeah, oh, sorry, Paul John. No, it's uh, one of the things which is uh, which is very very true. Uh, sadly, very true that uh, you will not see many people. I mean, I will give you an example. Uh, around 2015, when the brand, uh, when I just moved over here and I was back, I was doing a tasting with the guys. My professor was in the tasting and uh, just poured, um, had a great session. He said, "Shilton, it's a great whiskey. I really loved it." But uh, I cannot take it home. I cannot buy a bottle and take it home. I said, oh, well, what's wrong? You can always take it. Uh, that I cannot, I mean, I can take it for my use, but if there is any occasion at my house, I cannot uh, serve it to my guest. Uh, why, what's wrong with that? Because my guest will come up and say to me that why are you giving me a local product which is made 20 minutes away from here? And why, where's your imported scotch gone? Why are not uh, giving me an imported scotch? So the name imported scotch itself is a label. Do you, th do you think that comes down to kind of, um, and, and I know with the Asian mentality, the kind of uh, brands are a big thing. So, you know, if you've got a, a scotch whiskey, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different thing to a, like a local homemade brand. Yeah, we... Um, it's more it's more of not a brand thing but it's more of oh if i can get something for 100 pounds from outside of india that's a better thing in front of my guest than something from inside india it's simple as that prestige yeah. prestige yeah prestige i mean i mean i spent a lot of years drinking with this guy and we would go to bars and all over the place, and he, he would absolutely drink me under the table because he would drink whiskey all night. I'd drink beer, I'd be gone, and he would still be drinking whiskey, and he, he'd probably drink uh, Johnny Walker. That's sure, drink, though. He would drink it all night, constantly, and still be fresh as a daisy in the morning. And um, I've taken him to some, you know, Milroy's and places like that, and... and his preference is just purely blended whiskey uh, because he likes whiskey and that's what he likes. And uh, the, the few factors, the few factors would have it. I mean, we in India have uh, have got a sweet tooth, A, to start with. B, 
is uh, at the same time it's a hot country so a lot of uh, a lot of consumption that happens up there uh, i mean the bigger market I mean, there is of course a niche market which drink a single malt but the bigger market uh, will be having a mixer so we'll always see someone having a whiskey and a coke or a whiskey and, and and a soda water or ice uh, on the rocks it's because it's a, it's a hot country and at the same time we have a sweet tooth so we prefer that style of of whiskey it's a very common thing it's a very common thing you'll see um, but the one thing which you said, which we have seen and noticed, is that we can keep up. We can drink a lot. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We are all alcoholics. We, are, we consume more alcohol than anywhere else in the world, I think. Okay, the, the, the population is about 1.4, I think. Uh, I don't even have a count, uh, a billion in, yeah, in yeah. the country. <laughs> uh, the, the consumption in, in that country is 1.4 or 5 billion liters a year. So that's almost one liter per person. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, and 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 on top of that, it's a, a simple way. Uh, and there's two of us, oh, well, three of us here tonight, which is uh, Amit, Ravi, and me, myself. We are from a state of uh, Gujarat in India, and Good the amount of alcohol that has been consumed in Gujarat, it's. I've been there, Gujarat. Yeah. Well, that's so the amount of alcohol we drink in Gujarat, while it's not allowed. Uh, I think the I think the highest amount of um, alcohol sold in India is in Gujarat. Not sold, consumed. I mean, <laughs> am, consumed. I, am I right in saying that Gujarat sold illegally? Sold illegally. Am yeah. I right in saying that Gujarat is the next state to Pakistan? It's, it's, uh, it's Pakistan has got to... Pakistan has got Gujarat. Pakistan has got Rajasthan, Punjab, Kashmir. Yeah, yeah uh, I remember going there, and I, I remember we went. We went. To, uh, I joined a ship in Gujarat to go diving there, and I remember watching um, planes from India and Pakistan come and come and past and firing missiles at each other, and I'm like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> uh, they were having a little border tiff, I believe. We were just having a little fun. <laughs> yeah, but we we were on a ship not far from the land, and I'm like, oh, I hope they don't come out and and just jump one on us. Well, Wayne, you got to see some fireworks. I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's about as far north as I've been in uh, India, and I don't think you can get much further because we spent twelve hours on a mail train from um, Bombay, or uh, going up there. And it was quite an experience, I must admit. It was beautiful. It was lovely. There's, Gujarat there's a, is a Hindu state, right? Because I remember driving through there and we had to... Okay, it was Gujarat. early in the morning. It was like five, six in the morning. We, ha we had to kind of circumvent the cows that were sleeping in the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's... Uh, uh, that's um, you will find cows all over basis. India. <laughs> Ron, you would see in that. any state. Yeah, regular basis, but but I think if you if you think about maybe two states, whether Gujarat and uh, I think maybe Maharashtra put together, we have more Muslims in Gujarat and in Maharashtra than Pakistan and Afghanistan put together. Mm -hmm. so, oh, it's a wonderful country. I, I loved working there. I must admit, it was one it was one of the nicest places I I worked there when I worked there. Guys, yeah, I'm sorry. Shotan is trying to say something. I'm sorry to, to cut you off. No, 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 no. I was I wasn't. I was just gonna ask about the tram and uh, get back to Gujarat because I've got a lot of things to talk about Gujarat and the places there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just so that uh, we talk about this, this is the Peter uh, Select Cask. American Oak X Bourbon. Uh, this is again uh, this whiskey is about seven years old. Uh, ABB, guesses, ABB. Uh, there's a lovely experience you can do. I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys have tried it already, but give it, I will strongly suggest, give it a good big chew. Um, at least a six second chew and see the way it just explodes. A um, lot of black pepper spice, a uh, lot of black pepper spice on this. Uh, the chewing uh, thing, which I always tell people to do is, there's a very wonderful experience you get when you start chewing this. Um, the first thing what happens when you start chewing, it bites the tip of your tongue. Yeah. It really bites <laughs> the tip of your tongue. Yeah. And 
as you keep chewing it, you can see it's shooting up right across from the sides, going right on top and coming back to you. It's a beautiful experience with this ram. Um, it's, it has got this black pepper spice, a lot of spiciness to it. But then you sip it down, it is big peated. Uh, the peat over here, it's not a your eyelash style peat because the peat used in this one is sourced from the highlands. So it has got more of your earthy, a heathery character on this. This is very meaty. This dram is very meaty. The first thing which comes to my mind when I'm having a sip is barbecue. Straight away, it takes me to a, to a barbecue on this. Uh, lovely big dram. Um, it's, it's a whiskey which I always keep in my flask <laughs> when, I walk, when, when I have to go out somewhere. Um, not, not in the summer. Uh, but it's always in my in my flask. It's a big dram. It just blow. It explodes in your mouth. Uh, that's why I, I would say, give it a good chew. Uh, it it opens up. It's a it's a meaty dram, uh, nice earthy character to it. Uh, and uh, a, a few of my, I mean, uh, Yash maybe and and uh, Amit and Ravi will understand. I enjoy having this dram in there. In my in my little chai cup. I love this tram in this. Um, what's the PPM on it? Well, it's 35. 35. Yep. Uh, ABV. Okay, guessing. Guessing. I've seen a lot going on there. 55. It's 55.5. Uh, yep. It comes in a green green bottle. Uh, yes, have you got one over there at your the back? It comes in a green bottle, another uh, green box, maybe? No? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, oh, you have the boxes here. So that is a green bottle, uh, uh, which comes the dark green. The Oloroso PX are beautiful uh, colored ones as well. Uh, it has got uh, 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 this bright colors on, on the Oloroso and the PX out. Uh, it, they, are, they are the closed boxes. Um, so Peter is the... Uh, Select cast peat from Highland. It has a different style. If you like your, if you like your bold, we get we source the peat from yeah. So Yash uh, has got on the screen the Oloroso and the PX uh, on the screen. Um, there are uh, we source the peat. Say something from, so anyone on the full screen can have a look. Can you sing? Can you sing a song, Yash, for us? No, I mean, it will keep you for a longer time. <laughs> I have to get you know. I have to go and grab Kindle for that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yes, uh, we source the peat from two different regions, Isla and the Highlands. Uh, this one uses peat from the Highlands. The Bold uses peat from uh, Isla. So it's a different style of whiskey, uh, different character. But this is a big, big boy. I love this whiskey. Beautiful. I, I get loads of kind of like bacon, uh, yep. cherries from this. I mean, I, every time, every time I have the sip, I always give that a chew uh, because it just goes on. It just goes on. It's got this spiciness coming in, um, coming in from this. It's it's meaty. Uh, mm. It's meaty. I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to the barbecues coming up with this. Uh, uh, it, it's gonna go down well. Uh, Shelton, uh, the one which is in edited, what's the PPM on that? The twenty five percent. Edit, edited is about 10 ppm and where yeah. is that from uh, well it's again uh this the peat from the highland but just because it is 25 percent only so you don't kind of figure out what exactly it's got that uh it's coming back to you it's kind of a smokiness coming in so it's not something which you can just point your finger on this one you can easily point your finger on um it's it's a, it's not your isla peat at all uh it's a very different style of peat you can see that straight away uh, it's got, got this earthy, maritime, heathery character on this one, which is the peat from the highland. But I, I love very it. Chocolatey. And very chocolatey when you chew. Yeah, very chocolatey, yeah. Sort of a mixture of bitter with milk. Mm -hmm. It's thick. Oh, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people do some cigar pairings with this as well. What are your thoughts on this? Is it too much? Big boy, is it too? too, no, too I, th I think you mixed it up for me. I, I had a clear winner, but now 
you kind of mixed <laughs> everything up for me. I, I mean, my decisions on the, the drum of the night has just gone ballistic now because... Uh, Wayne, I'll, Wayne I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. The first thing is my, is my motto. If you can't convince them, confuse them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, th I think you just did that, yeah. Well, I think it's because I'm, I'm now fantastic. confused now. I don't know which one to go for. <laughs> oh, I really know. I really know. It's so big and bold. But so much complexity in there. So complex. So many flavours. And it's not... And the peat is nice and subtle, earthiness, chocolatey, thick, oily, and it, the taste lingers forever. God, well, which one do you prefer, Leo? What, of the total lineup? Yeah. This one. The peated? Yeah, yeah, I've, um, yeah, I've gone into peat quite a lot. That's exactly what exactly what Yash mentioned to you before, Leo. If you like your edited, uh, wait till you try the last one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. How um how how well does like heavily peated whiskey go in India? Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. It's not a big thing. Uh, it's not a big thing. Uh, but there is, of course, people who like peated whiskeys. Maybe different states, different different part of the country. The beauty about the country is that you find different weathers <laughs> everywhere. You know, you can. Uh, there is also a place called a school, which we call as the Scotland of India, because <laughs> it's it's nice and cold. Um, so uh, we get different uh, things. Uh, I'll give you an example. I am a big peat lover. I go I go bonkers. I go crazy for oh, peat whiskeys. Uh, if you if you look at my uh, whiskeys over here, everything down will be all peated, uh, limited editions or whatever it is, but all peated, most of them. Uh, I. I, uh, first trip or, or second trip uh, back home uh, from here, uh, I, I got a bottle of a peated whiskey, one of my favorite peated whiskey that I picked up uh, uh, from the shelf and got it back uh, for a gift because of my friend uh, in Goa has got a beach shack. I thought, okay, I'll just go to him and we'll have a good time on the beach. I'm meeting him after a long time. <coughs> I took a peated whiskey. Uh, we opened up the, I, I gave it to him as a gift. He said, Shilton, let's drink together. I'm, okay, fine, let's go for it. <laughs> he opened up the bottle, uh, first dram. Uh, I had that dram, and the first thing I said, his name is Prajay. I said, Prajay, dude, you can keep the bottle for yourself. Have it whenever you want to. I'll go back to my beers, because I was sweating. I was sweating with that dram, one dram. It's too hot and humid to have a peated uh, whiskey, especially in Goa. Um, uh, I don't see that. Uh, unpeated whiskies do work well. Uh, saying at the same time, uh, bold. I mean, CSD is the is the is it called as the military can canteen? Is it? Oh, yes, CSD in India. Uh, so there we have got the bold listed in that, which works very well, uh, which is which is peated. But heavy peated? Mm, no. To answer no, that, uh, to answer but, that question. But here's the thing, Shulton. Like, uh, okay, so. In India, from my experience, the people I know, most of them, I mean, I would say 95% of them are whiskey drinkers, whether it's blended, single malt or not. Generally, it's blended. And 80% of the time is what you can get hold of. But the people, people who actually are into the single malts, they are all after Lagawin, Ardberg, Lafroig, so generally, single malt lovers, they do love their peated whiskies. I mean, if you take it, Shilton has, you know, smack, Hammond, whether you talk about Hammond or Harsha or anyone else, you know, you know they, they love their, they love their peated whiskies in general. No, but uh, yes, I'll get back to that. The thing is, uh, as I said before, single malt drinkers who really understand whiskey, it will be a very small percentage, very niche market. Mm. Most of it is drinking blends. Uh, they, they want something which is sweet, high ABV. Uh, yeah, sweet okay. and high ABV is all they want to go for. I have to say that that peated select cast that you just, um, we've just tried is as good as anything from Isla. I was just. That's all I'm going to say. It definitely packs a punch more than Isla. It's. it's um... So overall complexity in terms of like the, the amount of chocolate you get on the end, the finish is endless. Uh, Honestly, but, but, I think the ABV helps in terms of 
tearing, tearing it through. But I, I've tried a lot of um, Islas on car strength. And, but it's so much complexity. You've got the, the, the earthiness from the, um, the Highland Peak. Oh. It's endless. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good it is. That's how good it is. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> compliments to the chef. I didn't mean compliments. to interrupt. I didn't. <laughs> That's right. It's such a. Um, so, um, Stilton, what not... age are we looking at on this? Let's have the rundown on this barrel. Yeah. What's the age? The age and the, the the barrel. What are we looking at? How many how many years in the barrel? Oh, this this one's uh, about uh, seven years old in a in a in a, in a, in a cask. Full it's a small, maturation. Uh, it's a it's a first fill American oak cask. Uh, this is a small batch. When I say small, it's about thirty cask roughly, uh, on 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 one. So every batch you will see it's kind of similar. It's very. If you have a very old one, I mean, this one I've got over here is uh, uh, at in 2019. I don't know which one uh, you guys have got. Uh, yes, must have must have it written. Oh, on the here. So the the batches before had a different age. Uh, it's uh, batch number two, fifth of January 2019. Okay, so that's the same one. So the same yes, one. Yes. Do you have any? Do you have any left of it? A bit. Could you I've do me, a could you do me one more sample? Sure, no problem. Could you send it to Garson. Garson, I think you would love this. It's it's a truly almost like an isla, but it's Indian. And this, it, this stands it, out this compared stands out anything like to Isla. I th I think you would be absolutely uh, loving this. Friday night is our. Um... Curry and, and whiskey night. So if you could, if you could get that up to me for next Friday, that'd be great. No problem. I'll get. I'll, I'll send it on Monday. First thing. I was only joking, Yash. Listen, all the parcels I send out don't arrive. So just whatever you want, mate. Yeah, I haven't had your little pink thing pop through my door either. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Carson, I'll, I'll let you into something, Carson. <laughs> I'm not here for the last. Like I'm here for the drums. Come on. <laughs> Please. I'll let you into something here, Garson. Um, you're not the only person to have this issue with the post office, is he, Wayne? No. <laughs> no. I've, I've done that before. I know how it desperate it is. It's just like, oh, my God, what's going on? I don't want to steal the show here, but it turns out my girth is wider than a lot of letterboxes. <laughs> it is, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, I, but actually, I think, Garson, this is something you should try because... I know you, you're a repeated lover, and this, actually, I think is as good as anything on Isla. Uh, we, we're sitting here with uh, an our bed because we don't have the... I'm sorry, guys, uh, we couldn't join tonight because we were on another thing, uh, but we're sitting here with an our bed, and we've got a couple of Arnamuckton drams as well. So, But, yeah, love love anything, Peter, and I'd love to try the, the Paul John. In fact... I think he's feeling what, jealous now. I tell yeah. you what. Listen, I had the Orbiter. Uh, we had the Orbiter on, on one of the Grand Drams, and uh, that was pretty fantastic. Uh, the box, I mean, uh, but the Dram was brilliant as well. It's a, it's a lovely Dram, guys, and one bottle I don't have in my, with me as well. Uh, it's, a, it's only about 350 bottles, I think, 352 yeah. or something. Uh, yeah. It was a wetting of two casks, one peated, one unpeated. It's a lovely Dram. We were fortunate enough. I got you covered. I got, I think, maybe four or five. <laughs> yeah, we were fortunate enough to taste it. A bit of cracking draft. Yeah, that's okay, that's a lovely dram. But if you love, if you like your peated dram, uh, peated whiskies, uh, Garson, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, get in touch with Yesh and make sure you, you try some of the Paul John's peated ones. Yeah, oh. I mean, I, I mean, on on the other hand, you could buy the select cost. I think you can buy eight of them for the price of. Uh, Mars Orbiter. Mars Orbiter, yeah. I've got to say. But the Mars Orbiter about, was Mars good, Orbiter. I must admit. Can you tell us about Mars Orbiter then, Carl? I've heard of this. And, uh... well, I can go and grab a bottle and uh, show you ah. talk about oh, it. I bet you can, Yash. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, yeah. the, bo the bottle is beautiful. As you open the, the bottle and the, the box, the box just lights up, but it, it was a stunning dram. Nick, it, it, was a, it was a lady that showed me her box and... Uh, <laughs> It lit up the whole room. 
And that was before we'd even tasted the dram. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> Too much information. That's a good point. That's a good point. It was Fee's box. Shaking the head, No. It was Fee's box. Fee ship's box. That's Nick. Nick, that's that's all I had to say about uh, that's I couldn't say it in a better way than Garson. That's all about that is mass orbiter for you. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I'm disappointed yeah. now after Garson's build up. Oh, oh my geez, geez. <laughs> it's like a transformer. But to be honest, I I actually think that that UK single cask, it's got, it's got, it's got, it's got a light in it. Oh my day, what. Oh, it's got a light in it. Oh, oh that's my Matthew. I'm going to be a bottle and, of and good thing this box, the light actually works. That's oh fantastic. my days. <laughs> I think I think the problem is with that, it's fantastic whiskey, but the whole shebang, it takes a, a lot of it away from it. The stopper is amazing, the box is amazing, but that pulled up for, for 350 pounds. You're paying a lot for all that shebang, aren't you? Oh no, that's that's taking the Mickey, that is. Yeah, no, uh, for, I, for love, I love that. I love that see. liquid. I love that liquid. I would say, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a liquid little, is amazing. I, I'm a believer of a liquid myself. First thing. Uh, Chilton, this is kind of what gets me is that, um, you know, edited in brilliance is still selling for 40 quid, which I think is, uh, you know, triumphant given that you've got worldwide demand and all that. Um, and others, uh, cost the same to make, but sell for twice as much or three times as much. Yeah, I mean, this. Look at the Mars Orbiter. The Mars Orbiter as a whiskey itself. It's it's uh, it's it's a proud uh, moment uh, how we came up with that whiskey. Uh, it's uh, Mangalyan, which is the first uh, mission uh, Mars uh, where, where India sent their the spaceship to Mars, successful one. And we just named the whiskey after that. And you just lo you just landed on Mars as well. I was just gonna say we did not send any whiskey to Mars. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> we did not send any whiskey over there, but we just named the whiskey uh, feeling, feeling, feeling proud about uh, the achievement. Uh, and that's in November 2013 when Michael picked up two casks, one peated, one unpeated, and wetted them together. So it's a big, rich whiskey. It's a full-bodied whiskey, and it's um, you get, if, if you like peated whiskeys, that's an absolute lovely dram if you have tried it um i was i still remember i was doing a show in belgium and uh that that whiskey was there on the stand for people to try and that's the only whiskey i tried all day because i know that i'm not going to get a chance to try it again <laughs> so i was only uh enjoying that mass orbiter on the stand it's a lovely dram um very very it's 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 i don't think you can even buy it uh, it's, it's very difficult to find a bottle of that yeah, there was only 100, uh, 325 bottles made. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I got one at retail, rest I had to get off auctions. So, and the one I got at retail was thanks to Shilton. Uh, he helped me out get at retail, one of them. The rest of the fours, I had to buy them at auctions. Um, it, no, it, it's amazing whiskey and... Uh, I think uh, it, it's the the reason it was re released, and it was to do with the achievement of uh, I get the I guess the Indian NASA. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I think I think we're gonna have a um, a vote on the night. Let's get the poll I, up. I just wanted Let's to say. Going. I just wanted to offer my appreciation for that last whiskey because honestly, it reminded me of some of the best some of the best Ardbegs I've tasted and better than the ones I've tasted recently, I have to say. Um, but also in the nose, there was that far walking past a farmyard where a herd of cows had just had a good old shit that <laughs> you, get, you get from a good 12-year-old uh, Lagavulin. So really, what you guys have done with this is really, really amazing. And I want to ask you a question, children, that if, it, if it's sort of seven years old in India, would that be equivalent of maybe twice as much in Scotland? Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Easily, easily three Amazing. times. Amazing. Amazing. If Whatever. not more. I mean, um, Tim and, and uh, Tim, Tim and I know uh, each other for a long time now, and I know he's, he's a big fan mm -hmm. of uh, of the peated whiskies. And coming that from Tim is, is really something big uh, mm -hmm. for to listen about it. Um, uh, to well, hear, I, uh, I, I just want to say, say one thing. I mean, I'm going to freestyle here, but I'm just going to sing you a verse. I was, I was going to say the same thing. We, we needed some light moment there, too. 
<laughs> well, I'm just going to freestyle because I haven't written anything here. So something like... Well, uh, tonight I gotta say, Indian whiskey's rule. And if you're stuck in Scotland, I think you're a big, big fool. Oh yeah, and thanks to Shilton, he's taking us all through the Indian school. Oh, but this peated cast. The finish don't disappear. Oh, one thing is clear. This whiskey lasts. It's longer than Shilton's beard. <laughs> there you are, was, just a little verse. I was waiting for something at the end there, Tim. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, you, well, Shilton's beard had to be mentioned. Yes, of course. <laughs> Well, it, well, it for a lot Thank of... you for that, Tim. That was a great little tune. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, Chilton's <laughs> beard rhymes with a lot of obvious things like weird and, you know, cleared and, well, we will get there, you know. No, but, but thank, uh, yeah, this you, this, nice this, to see you. this uh, nice to see you, team, again. Uh, it's and been, you, a, uh, it's been a long time. The... Where's I'm your hat? Pull the poll up and let, let's do the, the poll. Let's see what everybody's thoughts are for the night. Unfortunately, I can't uh, oh, no. <laughs> actually do this, but I think I should be able to. Can, can we not vote for all of them? <laughs> no, you can only vote for one. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, which one? Hmm. <sighs> Come on, folks. It's nearly gone. Garson, sorry, you don't, you don't have a vote. Ah, oh, come on. I just thought I'd chuck it. She never piece. actually tasted it. I was actually going to ask Nick what he wanted as a second place. But... <laughs> Ooh, I, it's pretty close to what I thought it would be, I must admit. It's, it will be close between the Oloroso and the single cast, I feel. Ooh. Or oh, maybe 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 there's maybe there's, a, maybe there's, there's a, already a request for you. There is a showstopper there, which is uh, Peter's Helic cask. It, it'll be it'll be close between the UK single cask and the Peter cask. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Tim, there is a request for you. Yeah. Anyway, right. you can, okay. You come up with a tune for our group, uh, Swag Whiskey Group. Swag Whiskey Group. There uh, we go. Come on. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, well, we, can, we can always try, can't we? Well, let's just see what the vote goes. What do we think about the voting? Well, we know I voted for the UK exclusive, so I'm quite happy with that result. <laughs> I, I think I called it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> That's about right. You see, I would be happy with that, but I actually think I preferred the petered select at the end. Yeah. But I didn't get a vote because I, I launched the polling, so I, I don't get to vote. But I, yeah, I, I put your vote in, Wayne. Hey? I put your vote in. I voted for the Peter. Did you? Oh, good man. <laughs> I think I think the, the thing is with the, the Peter, I think it was absolutely amazing. But I think the, um, the UK food, I still think it had that, that kind of that, the Indian whiskey factor, whereas I think the, the Peter, I... I I could have been fooled that that was a, a scotch quite easily. And maybe that's just the Highland Peak. But um, the UK exclusive, I think, was, was phenomenal. Top to bottom. No, uh, just, just to add on, uh, add on onto the peated uh, side cask, um, it will really be, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see that in a blind tasting and let people yeah. start guessing what it is, like where it is from. And you can, you can have fun. I mean, if you have that bottle at home and if you could see someone coming home, um, someone like Tim, who's a, who's a big fan of the of the peated Isla whiskey, and just pour a dram for him and say, "What do you think?" Mm. And trust me, it, it's 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 the fun that you will have. <laughs> yeah, but you know, having said that, I think for the price and the fact that I've got a lot of peated whiskeys at the moment, um, I think the brilliance is brilliant. It's like it could be a really good space side whiskey, 
and yeah. it's quite distinctive and for around 40 quid amazing value yeah so i have to throw that in i think i think that is that is probably the big thing about there for the paul john the the value is really good and i think it's it's one of those things people don't kind of uh visit because of what they think it's going to be and when you actually taste it it's completely different and i think that's what one of the things i've taken away from tonight is that uh the paul john is completely different to what i was expecting Mm. Well, I, I, one of the things which I always mention, and I, I love mentioning it again, it's, you know, you know, doing a tasting and people do not understand. So how, Shilton, can you tell us more about the pasture extraction or pasture maturation? How do you justify that? And uh, how does it work? I, mean, I, I keep telling people, I mean, to make it easy for people to understand what is a pasture extraction rate, like three times faster, I tell people, look at me. I look like I'm 38. I'm only 18. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what the going weather does to you <laughs> you wish <laughs> oh, man. Well, one thing i want to say is i i would love to say thanks to uh yash you've done a wonderful job on the packaging the distribution can't fault it it's probably one of the best packaged and distributed tastings we've had so far i, I think you went over yeah, and above on that uh, and i want to thank you for that thank you uh i also want to thank ravi uh thanks for the discount code and um offering these bottles up for the club tasting i think that was brilliant of you and uh, i hope to deal with you a lot more in the future you're and, welcome um, our brand ambassador absolutely stunning night i think the whiskeys shone out loved the whiskeys um i hope you get what you want in the way of a child in the future whether it's a male or a female i don't know what you're wishing for but i hope whatever you want is coming up and it's going to be a healthy one in the future thank you thank you so much guys and uh, i will also add on to this um saying it's been it's 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 not so easy for for people like us who have been traveling and meeting people all the time uh, most of the time in mm -hmm. your jobs and then suddenly you are stuck at home so thanks to the technology that we can still sit and meet up and have a and share a dram and have a good laugh and still have a good time for me it's always been my 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 thing uh, and every time someone says shilton um, how do you what is your say on this? How do you enjoy the whiskey most? Uh, the best way of enjoying a dram? Is it with ice, water, or what? Or mixer, or what? And I always say this, the whiskey is best enjoyed in the right company. So you need yeah, the yeah, good, yeah. good people around you to, to enjoy a dram. And that's, uh, that's, that's always been my, my, my line. And I love doing that. So thanks to you guys for making a perfect Saturday evening for me and dramming with you. And I hope to see you guys in person as well soon uh, or more virtual um, uh, as, as, as we can. Um, um, I've also been, a, uh, the lockdown has also made me a member of, a, of one or two groups as well locally where we catch up and just uh, do virtual drinking. So yeah, happy to, happy to share. Let's share some more drams together soon. I think we've had a great night, to be honest. I think the whiskey was outstanding. Um, obviously, there's some great whiskeys there. Um, I'm looking forward. I think uh, actually some of our members actually bought whiskeys to dram out already based on what we've tasted tonight. So uh, that's quite exciting. Um, and I'm hoping to try some of your new stuff coming up. And uh, Yash is going to organise some of that stuff. Um, so thanks a lot for it, for that. Anybody else want to say anything before we close down the uh, video? Can I say something, please? Yeah, absolutely. So tempted. Uh, I just heard Tim in the very end. I missed his um, song. If he can sing it again. I'll try, but you've got to understand that I was making the lyric up. Tim, I, 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 I have a request for the ride. 
My request to team is that whenever this is done tomorrow, you need to send me that video again. I absolutely loved it. I'm going to post it up on social media. <laughs> hey, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, you're recording, right, Wayne? On yeah, we are recording, yes, we are recording. Is it recording? I'll pass it on to Yash and he can distribute it out. I was making up the lyrics, so it's not going to come up the same twice, but it went something like this. <laughs> Thanks to Shilton Anno, Indian whiskey's rule. And if you're stuck in Scotland or Ireland, then you're a bigger fool. <laughs> I tell you, all these Paul John whiskies, they really make me drool. Well, let me tell you, let me make one thing clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This finish is so damn long, it just never disappear. I say the finish on this whiskey, it's longer than Shilton's beard. Ah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Like something like that. <laughs> I just called my wife. Thank you, Tim. I just called my wife. I, I was like, you know, I missed some, some, something very special. <laughs> So she just came back saying that. Oh, was brilliant. Well, hi, how are you? Doing? That was wonderful. You're welcome. Well, just, you know, that's what whiskey does to you. It just kind of gets a bit creative, creative juices flowing. Hey, I couldn't play guitar before I drank whiskey. Now look at me. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, Shilton, do you happen to know, we've got a family thing clashing the same day. Do you happen to know if, if at the whiskey show this year, they're doing a, a trade day as well? Or not? They are not. They are not doing a trade day. They are okay. doing the the show is going ahead. Uh, the whiskey show London, but Friday they are not. The, there is no trade day as such like okay. before. I'll just have to get a train up from Dover then on Sunday morning and try and get to that one. All right. Well, hopefully I'll see you before then. But I agree with you that the whiskey tastes better in company, and that's been the biggest drawback of lockdown. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know. Well said. Anyway, Thank Anyone you. who hasn't hasn't had a drink in uh, in actual company of Shilton, I would r highly recommend, <laughs> especially after a whiskey show, when he starts dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Have to come down to Brighton show. These are these are all rumors. These are all rumors. <laughs> you don't you don't have to believe them. No. Yeah, it's. It, I mean. Yeah, the only thing is, like, mo mostly, like, myself and maybe 17 other guys, we normally sit on the table while Shilton is on the dance floor with all the women, maybe about 30 seconds. <laughs> well, Shilton, are you saying that, um... that you just, like, take over the whole table? <laughs> Why are you sitting on the table, not on the chairs? Because he's Shilton. <laughs> what I meant was sitting on the chair, with, uh, you know. Right, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to end the recording now. And uh, you, you it, better, you better. Be <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shelton, are you still in contact with um, Jason? And I just want to say Jason thank, was yeah, funny. thanks um, Jason for organizing fine. this. Thanks, uh, Shelton, for coming down, spending your time with us. It's been an absolutely fantastic evening. And uh, to the drinks warehouse. Thanks for providing us all with these drums. Lovely. Yeah. Recording's finished, so you guys are just on free for all now. Okay. Well, anybody Thank wants you. to say anything, just come in as you want. Yeah, you can start swearing now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm going to leave you to it, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Rui. Thanks, Rui. Are you still in contact with um, Jason? Yeah, yeah, Jason, whiskey wise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been, I've been chatting with him. Yes, he lives very close to yes, where yes. Round the corner from me. Yeah. Round the corner for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we have been chatting uh, very much, uh, almost every week, I think. So yeah, he's he's there. Yeah, it was the first person that got me in touch with um, some of your brand. Yeah. Especially in the whiskey show, he's yeah. like, oh, drink the set car, but you need to let it rest for thirty minutes. <laughs> His favorite whiskey, his yeah, favorite favorite, yeah. ram is the classic. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually miss uh, I actually miss his uh, videos, like uh, the YouTube videos he used. Oh to... yeah, he doesn't know more, does he? Yeah, he can't. He can't. He's in a contract now with uh, the big boss. The Why whiskey do you work now? exchange. He can't. Oh, he works for exchange. Yeah. 
But did he work in the shop or head office? No, he works for the uh, whiskey dot auction now. He's a he's a buyer. Ah, he's a buyer then. Shilton, I'd quite like to ask, um, out of edited and brilliant, um, what's the best seller? Same price? Edited and brilliant, uh, it I'd is. Say, uh, hang on, let me have a wild guess. I'd say brilliant uh, sells 25%, 30% more. Well, brilliant sells more than edited. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, about the um, I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh, it's uh, it was selling, but if you had to compare between those two, then it is uh, brilliant selling more because uh, edited was doing very well. Uh, edited was doing very well, but uh, bold came in the picture, which is more Peter yeah. and, and bold Wayne, uh, took over. Sorry, Wayne, you need to stop recording. He's still recording. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to? Uh, is